From the time the sun rises over the St. John's River, the Bulldogs, the Gators, and their fans open their eyes to another college football Saturday and know something special is about to happen in Jacksonville. Georgia Florida rivalry is. This is not just a rivalry game. It's uh, unique. A lot of hate in the whole game, kind of game. The rivalry is between two bordering states. It's really loud all the time. Uh, you have no idea what's going on. Red and black one side, orange and blue the other. The two teams that, that really don't like each other, this is definitely an experience. A lot of great athletes have played in this game and it has a lot of great history. You usually get goosebumps, you, your heart starts beating fast. I believe we're up in the series, but. You know, last year it didn't it didn't go so well. It's such a special game and it's so great to be a part of it. It's great for us to be a part of it as well. The Home Depot SEC on CBS brings us to TIAA Bank Field in Jacksonville and our matchup. The eighth ranked Georgia Bulldogs, the number six Gators of Florida, and half orange and blue, half red and black just like it's always been since 1892. And so much on the line, as it always seems on an annual basis. As you take a look at the SEC East standings, Florida on top, the Georgia Bulldogs right on their heels. Whoever wins this one is in the driver's seat for a trip to Atlanta at the SEC Championship. And we welcome you, everybody. Brad Nestle, we're Gary Danielson. Partner, we wait for this on a yearly basis. Yep. It's the seventh time in all these years that both teams have been ranked in the top 10, second year in a row, and everything on the line again. You know, Brad, and I think both teams feel like they're going to play their best football from now on. Florida playing a little bit better. Georgia's dying to play this game after a couple tough games. Yeah, you know, that's it. At the beginning of the year, everybody said, well, it's Georgia and Alabama, and that's it. And, well, now there's more doubters maybe for Georgia than the backers. They had a rough game and then a washout game, you know. So now it's the opportunity to play a game that they've been looking forward to. And some of those games they thought they'd throw their helmets out and win, South Carolina beat them. They know Florida's for real. Well, they're going to go back to what they do best, I think. I, I think so, too. There's a lot of talk about should they open it up, throw the ball deep? Yes and yes, but they shouldn't get away with, I think, maybe the best football player running the ball in this conference, DeAndre Swift. He is a home run waiting to happen every play. That Florida defense has to know that one missed tackle at the lot of scrimmage, he could take it to the house. Now, Jake Fromm, a couple weeks ago, South Carolina had a tough game. A couple, three interceptions, had, had one before that. Then a rain game. You know he's been waiting for this game to get there, tee it up, and show his fans, his teammates, and his coaches that he can still play the game. Well, the guy on the other side for Florida showed his team his toughness, Kyle Trask. I don't know if there's been in the state of Florida a guy to come in for an injured quarterback since Earl Morrill took over <laughs> for Bob Greasy in 72 to do what this guy's done. He went down against Auburn. We thought maybe the season was even over. Not only did he come out of the locker room, he led him to a win. And now both teams having had a week off, you get some guys healthy. And on defense for Florida, they get a couple guys back that are huge. They do. And I think this is the matchup that Florida has to win and Georgia has to control. The two defensive ends, Jonathan Grenard and Jabari Zaniga, these two guys are players not just in the passing game, in the running game, no matter what direction you run, you have to account for their speed. If you're running away from they'll run it from the backside. You run at them, they'll run under a block. If you want to watch some fun football, watch the big tackles for Georgia. Thomas and Wilson against these two stars from Florida. So that sets the scene, and quite a scene it is. Here come the Georgia Bulldogs, led by their quarterback, Jake Fromm. It's either the 97th or 98th meeting. Depends on which school you talk to. Over the years, they're great coaches. They're great players. We've got more of them on hand here today. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Allstate. Microsoft. LinkedIn and by Chick-fil-A. Welcome to Jacksonville, Florida. 
for the annual mid-season border clash between the dogs and the gators. There's a lot of habit. Great robbery game. This is what it's all about. We back, we back in the speakers, back in black, getting blasted in the bleachers. It's probably true what my mama said. I do it just like my daddy did. We back, we back, we back in the saddle. Back on stage, making the whole place rattle. Back with the old team, train on the track. Thought we were gone, but you wrong, now it's on. And a hurdle for DeAndre Swift. He's going to take it for the Gator. Touchdown. This is the Home Depot SEC on CBS. The best game from the best conference. And we're back in Jacksonville as the Gators in their home blue jerseys consider the home team today the number six team in the land. Third member of our team down on that field is Jamie Erdahl. Brad, it was a timely set of bye weeks for both of these teams. As we all know, health can play such a factor in playing successful November football. Will the rich get richer if you ask Kyle Trask because he has another successful wide receiver coming back into the lineup. You mentioned those two defensive guys. Well, Kadarius Tony is back on the offensive side of the ball after missing a half a dozen games with a shoulder collarbone injury. You can't ask a Florida coach without hearing the word explosive when you think of Tony's abilities within these offense. Lining up against him, potentially for Georgia, is cornerback Tyson Campbell. He missed four games with a small but mighty injury called turf toe. On that defensive front, Tavon Walker returns. And Jake Fromm should be happy. He's got Lawrence Cager back after dealing with a shoulder and rib injury. Kirby told me we cannot limit Cager within this offense. He might take a hit here and there, but that doesn't mean that we have to limit him. He's got to be big for Jake Fromm today. Thanks, Jamie. Weather, cloudy all day. But perfect for football, 66 degrees in Jacksonville. It was 90 at about 5 o'clock Thursday afternoon. Georgia is ahead in the all-time series. They started playing this game in Jacksonville in 1933. When each is ranked, it's 10, 10, and 1. When each is in the top 10, it's 3 and 3. Today means everything to these two clubs as far as a possible trip to Atlanta. Rodrigo Black and Ships got it teed up as Georgia won the toss and deferred. And Freddie Swain and Tyree Cleveland, as you see right down the goalpost, orange and blue, red and black. Half and half in the stadium. And Florida will start things at the 25-yard line. As we take a look at the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And it all starts with number 11, Kyle Trask, coming off a career-high game two weeks ago in the win over South Carolina with four touchdown passes. Cannot imagine he's going to be overwhelmed with this scene. You play at LSU, you faced a great defense of Auburn already. He should be calm and ready to play. The Gators had a disastrous start last year in this game with turnovers early. That's what they want to avoid, as Dan Mullen told Jamie in the pregame show. Quick toss, and that's a good one. Complete first down, Kyle Pitts, the tight end, and the rest of the offense for the Gators. And both coaches talked about this guy forever yesterday. Yes. <laughs> Whether you're Dan Mullen or you're Kirby Smart trying to defend him, and right off the bat, he's got his first catch and a first down. He lined up, even though he says he's a tight end on the lineup, he lined up in the slot wide. Now he will line up in the tight end position to the right side of the formation. So one play, one first down to the 39. The Michael P. Ryan. Tough yard. Malik Heron made the stop for Georgia. Defensively for the Dogs, and they've been pretty stingy. They're the top defense in the SEC, led by Monty Rice. Their top tackler, he had a career-high 11 tackles and an all-important forced fumble in this matchup a year ago. So we'll give P. Ryan a yard at second down and nine. I was going to set up what I thought would be the pressure point in the game, but I couldn't even get to it. Man, <laughs> Pitts catches a pass already. <laughs> From the 40, P. Ryan flanking Trask in the Gator gun. Play action. Trask got it to Pitts again, and another first down. 
Great start for the Florida offense so far. So far, he's lined up in the slot. He's lined up at tight end right. This time, he lines up in tight end left. And you can see Dan Mullen. He's trying to distort the Georgia defense by establishing his pressure point with the tight end. He feels that he can do that. The adjust next adjustment goes to Kirby Smart. He says with Van Jefferson and Kyle Pitts, it's where's Waldo? And Pitts is not quite sure where Waldo is supposed to be right now. He's looking at the sideline. They're going to take a timeout. I don't think they have enough players on the field. They only have 10 players on the field, and that's what confused Kyle Pitts. That's the way to stall an opening drive. Early timeout. Florida back on offense when we return. Harry Dog probably streams CBS Sports HQ, the free 24-7 news network for coverage that's always focused on the game. Get nonstop highlights, fantasy, advice, and picks. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. Gary will be along with the HQ guys at the end of this one. I actually think it was a good timeout for Florida. They got a good drive going. First down, uh, first half, first uh, timeout, not as... Uh, big as a second half timeout right. early in, the, in this half. Well, Kyle Pitts so far, you'd be hard pressed to find a better tight end in the country, or at least more versatile one than this guy. Well, and especially history, we did the Notre Dame when Cole Clement caught nine passes in that game for over 100 yards. So I think Florida watched that game tape. <laughs> Trask is under center with P. Ryan behind him. He gets the toss hey. and delays and now gets into the secondary and he's almost got a first down. And that play was defended. Georgia was ready for it. Tyler Clark came around the edge and a P Ryan with a good cut. He saw he could not get wide. Watch him come out. He wants to go wide. No, nope. has to cut back behind it and makes a positive place. Second and very short. Could do anything here. Remember a year ago, Dan Mullen started out the game with a free foot. That backfired. And had it open. Didn't, didn't hit it. Didn't hit it. It's third down, uh, second down at about a foot. Ryan. Oh, I don't think he got it. Going to be third down and about a foot. Depending on where they spot it. Pull both guards. Kyle Pitts has to pin down on the play. Come around from the outside. Malik Herring made a nice play he from did. the backside there. He sure did. He ran it down. If you uh, go back to the South Carolina game a few weeks ago, South Carolina hurt Georgia with the pulling both guards the whole game. Didn't gain a lot of yards, but it was effective. Now, when you've got a guy that weighs 240 pounds and he's 6'5", don't you just want a quarterback sneaker under center? It's third down and less than one. I like that strategy. Plus, you're able to push him nowadays. Center judge has got to get out of the way first. Had to take a timeout. Wow. Well, you don't want to take two of those this early, that's for sure. But that's the case. Yeah, I can cover one of them. I can't cover it. <laughs> You're on your own with that second one. Two timeouts used in a little over three minutes, Gary. Yeah, and the reason is just like the last timeout, they had only 10 men on the field. Michael Pirine comes in late. He doesn't know the play, but with the substitution, the official does a good job to allow Georgia the opportunity to substitute. If you're a Florida fan, that's the proper procedure for the official. Florida will break the huddle close to the line of scrimmage with two tight ends on third down and about the length of the football, which it's been for a couple of snaps. Trask under center. And movement. And that is, I'll tell you what, I've watched four games. And Georgia has shifted at least 10 times and produced those types of emotions like that. And Dante Lang, the second tight end, is the guy that jumped. So now it's third down and five and change. It happened in the noise in the Notre Dame game, but they got South Carolina a few times. They got Kentucky once. The shifting of the Georgia, I assume there's a shift call, and Florida reacts to it. So that changes the complexion completely. Yes. From second and a half a yard to third and a half inches, back to third and medium. 
Jefferson, Cleveland, and Tony, the wide receivers, and then Pitts, the tight end, goes out to the top of your screen. That's the fifth different position that Pitts has gone. Now he's basically playing the X receiver by himself to the wide side. That time, George almost jumped into the neutral zone. Here's a quick throw out to P. Ryan, and he's got the first down. See, that's the stress you put on a defense in modern college football. You put your tight end to the wide side at the top, and your running back to the bottom. How do you line up versus this stuff? Easy play, wide receivers are blocking, pitch and catch. Well-designed play by this Florida offensive staff. Trask, three for three for 31 Stucky. yards, including that last one. And the play is under review. Looking for where the spot was. I thought he had it, but we'll wait and well, see. If it's close, the, the Florida will know where it is. It's they've been there three times. <laughs> the same spot. Exactly. Let's see if his knee goes down on the what 39 and a half. Mm. He falls. It's close. Now do we have a down the line shot? There you go. Yeah, the ball's in his left hand, too. I think they're going to move this back to the 30-yard line, just past the 40-yard the, the line. I think it's going to be just on the line. If he had it in his right arm, he might get the first down, but he has it in his left arm. Good stoppage of the play by the replay official. Call on the field was a first down. Call from me was a first down. That means nothing. <laughs> So we're going to wait and see what the replay guys have yeah, to say. Now it's fourth down. Now, if you're Dan Mullen, you've already used five different formations for your tight end, used two timeouts, and you've got your third try at short yardage. Do you go for it? After further review, the runner did not make the first down. He's down on the 40-yard line. It will be fourth and one at that spot. Now it's decision time. I think it would be a bad message to your team not to go for it here, wouldn't it? Would nine out of 16 on fourth downs this season, and I don't think any of them have been any shorter than this. Yeah, I, I think you got to go for this. I mean, last year we were here when Georgia had, what, seven or eight plays in a goal line stand? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, here you go. First big play of the game. Well, big Jordan Davis, 325 pounds, is right over the center here. Trask is in the shotgun. Unless he'll come up under center. They might you know, try to draw him off. And he backpedals now. He's going to throw for it. Flares it out and it's broken up by Georgia. Boy, that says a whole lot, doesn't it? About what Dan Mullen thinks about how he can run the ball against this Georgia front. You're watching football. You're saying, wait a second here. We had second and short, third and short, fourth and short, and we're going to throw a one on one route. Great coverage that time by LeCount. Richard LeCount breaks up the play, and Georgia will take over offensively with the first big stop and the reaction from the head coach. Mm. That close. Want to stay up to date? Hey Siri, show me college football rankings. Georgia takes over offensively as we take a look at our Chick-fil-A starting lineups. And it starts with the captain of the offense, number 11, Jake Fromm. 29 and 6 as a starter in a Georgia uniform. At the 40-yard line. DeAndre Swift runs into a pack of Gators, maybe got a yard out of it. Offensively joining Jake Fromm and company. Gary talked about Zuniga and Grenard and the effect they have, and that puts some pressure on the tackles, Isaiah Wilson and Andrew Thomas. And they're good ones. Yep, they are. Between the two of them, they average 6'6", 330. Grenard, who can be a game wrecker. Standing up right now. Now he'll put his hand in the dirt. Second and nine. And hit in the backfield oh, immediately. Yeah. And it's Zuniga all over Swift. 
Well, that time the tackle didn't do his job very well. Well, it's the quickness. He lined up inside of what is called a bear front. They cover up the inside player. Zaninga's inside. Moon is outside. But Zaninga is the guy that makes the play. And Isaiah Wilson just too slow off the snap. Uh, he whiffed on that one. And it's third down and long. And that brings back memories of last year when Zaninga was coming around the corner making those plays in the run game. It's just not the passing game that those two guys have an influence on the game. Third down and 14. Fromm's first pass down the middle complete. On the run is Cager, and he got there, I think, very close. Boy, that is some poor zone defense by Florida. Third and long. And you allow a guy to make a play like that. It's a dump off play. George is playing it very soft. Just a little dump off play to the middle. And I think it was Terry Dean, number 21, that took the bad angle. He got to the outside and makes the first down. Cager being back, we thought would make a difference. He did on that play. Got 15 on third and 14. And Georgia in Gator territory at the 49. That was great protection by that. Line last that play for Georgia on third and long. Georgia's only given up four sacks on the season of Jake Fromm, who's all alone in the backfield on first down. Gonna loft one deep and almost intercepted by the secondary back there. Sean Davis almost had the interception. Sometimes you get beat, and sometimes you're the guy that beats the defense. Watch, he was beat before on a quickness, but watch, he evens it up here. Now it's one to one. Isaiah Wilson buries Zaniga on that one. Passes underthrown, and this could have been picked off. You're right, Brad. That was poorly underthrown that time by Jake Fromm. He was intending the pass for Demetrius Robertson. He's lucky he got away with that one. Yep. That should have been a pick. Second and ten. And now Fromm under center. Brian Harrion behind him, and Harrion will get the call, and he's wrapped up for a loss. Joan Taylor made first contact for the Gators. Their defense, C.J. Henderson and Marco Wilson, when they're out there and they have that front in front of them to apply pressure as good as any two corners around. Well, you can see the game plan for Florida and Todd Gratham. On second down to first down, he's wanting to cover up the inside play uh, offensive lineman and use the bear front. Five defensive linemen are out there. Third and long again. Last time Georgia held them out. They got 15 on third and 14. Can they get 11 here? Extra man on the rush from fires. Complete first down to Robertson. And give it to the protection. That time Florida brings five, and it is picked up. That took a long time for that receiver to cross the field, but watch these guys inside. It's one extra rusher. Reese gets picked up on the bottom, allows Jake to step into it, and a long throw across the field. Terry Dean gets beat again. Third down, could it be the story this year? Because it was the story in last year's game. All three of the touchdown passes Jake Fromm threw last year on third down. Yep. So two big third downs in this drive. That one picked up. 17 to the Gator 33. Prime to throw again. Maybe he's going to run with it. Gets what he can. Dives around the 30. Jake doesn't run a lot. But he's a pretty good athlete, and that time he got what he could and brings up second and seven. Trying to go hurry up. And Florida running some guys around. From Tried to reload, and now he got away somehow. And he might have the first down. I think he does. He got blasted forward by Grenard, I think, on the tackle. Or he might have been short. That was good coverage in the secondary that time. Fromm had a decent amount of time. But then I think he's going to get sacked right there. And as Ness told you, he kind of wiggled around and popped out the other side. Second effort by Grenard. He sort of shoved Jake over that line of scrimmage, which is... Still a third and one coming up. Third and one, Swift with Fromm. All out blitz, safety blitz look. See the corner way inside here. That gives you the man call to let's the see. outside. Let's see if they stay with that. Swift 
Got the first down. Up safety blitz. Ran into Sean Davis, but he picked up enough to move the sticks. Here's last year what Gary's talking about on third down. Take us through this. Well, they were five scores on third down. Three of them touchdown passes. The first two to J.J. Holliman. Then they also went five for five. They had a field, a touchdown and two field goals. They were in the red zone, but they were eight for 14 with four touchdowns on third down. This throw is down to the 18 on first down to Pickens, the freshman. And so Georgia down in the red zone where well, they've been good this year 29 out of 30 got my fingers crossed there a little bit I saw him going to the red zone I was thinking they're five for five last year in the red zone and uh, you can see that both of these teams are good at this they are preventing scores in the red zone Florida number two to Ohio State see if they can hold Georgia out without points here got an excellent field goal kicker of course in Rodrigo Blankenship a lot of space right here a lot of space from down the middle tips incomplete it was intended for Charlie Warner the tight end all right I thought he should have gone to Eli Wolf on that play thought he should have gone left had a lot of space to throw with outside technique right here he ended up going to his right thought he could have looked off and got it to 17 Eli Wolf for an easier throw through to the wrong tight end yes broken up by Jawan Taylor who's made a couple nice plays in this opening quarter third down at six and Georgia keep living on third down. So far, so good. Third and 14, third and 11, third and one here. K third K and six. Cager's his most comfortable thrower, and he's on the outside on the bottom. Now he's going to move toward the line of scrimmage. Here's the throw out to Harry, and he's got a first down. Just enough. Ness, you know, you don't want to lose a game right before a bye. And for a couple weeks now, the talk has been, is our offensive coordinator, James Coley, good enough to call these plays? But you know what? He's pitching a perfect game in the call so far in this game. Just inside the 12. First down. Fromm's got all day. Throws out. Good thing that Harrion didn't hold on to that. He would have lost about five yards. Then Trell Miller was over there covering. <laughs> So from four for seven so far for Jake in this opening drive. Here comes Ben Cleveland into the game. Now Florida, Georgia has six offensive linemen in the game. Cade Mays goes to the tight end position to the right. Cleveland's at right guard. This is actually an extra tackle or lineman in the game. Let's see if Don DeAndre Swift runs that way. He'll come the other way. And didn't pay off. Drop for a loss. Kyrie Campbell submarined him. And it's third and long. Yeah, Kyrie Campbell beat the block right across right there. They could not. There was no room because the nose tackle takes a back door and Cleveland could not clean it up. He went behind the center, Trey Hill, and Cleveland could not cut him off. 15th play of the drive coming up. They're perfect on third down so far, but they're going to have to earn this one as well. About the same spot in the game when J.J. Holloman threw, got that pass to the corner of the end zone, a busted coverage last year. They're going to have to hustle here to get the play off. And they just did from look out from behind, goes the other way. Nobody home over there except the camera guy. I don't, I don't think the Georgia team were all on the same page. That was much somewhat of a busted play there on third and long. formations you can watch the edge rushers come from the backside lucky to get it off but nobody in the end zone to throw to even if he would have completed I don't think there was right routes run by the Georgia receivers on that play there's a numbers for Rodrigo Blankenship this year 12 out of 14 he's had one blocked out of a Jake Camarda hold this will be a 30 yard attempt to try to put Georgia on the board first and he's got it so a good looking opening drive started at the 40 yard line after the defense held. They were perfect on third down until the last one. Had to settle for three. Dogs, three nothing. And now do Project Smarter, presented by the Home Depot. Yeah, and, and this is not a surprise. The pressure point was going to be Kyle Pitts, the tight end. Where's Pitts? Where is Pitts going to line up? And that's the 
what Georgia has to overcome in this game. Defensively, they have to have their game plan of finding number 84, and you knew Dan Mullen would put them all over the field. Establish it in the first quarter, find out what Georgia's going to do against it, and then go on with your game plan from there. Two for two for 25 yards in the opening drive that stalled at the 40, and that's where Georgia took over. Went 47 yards. It took them 16 plays and over seven minutes to settle for a Blankenship field goal. And Rodrigo blasts this one out of the back of the end zone, so Florida will start from the 25-yard line. Tomorrow, it's an NFL at CBS doubleheader. The Colts meet the Steelers, or the Panthers take on the Titans, followed by Aaron Rodgers and the Packers on the road against the Chargers. Jim, Tony, and Tracy will have that one. It all starts with JB and the guys on the NFL today at noon Eastern on CBS tomorrow. Ness, when we were talking to Kirby, didn't you get the feeling that he expected his team to play their best game of the year in this game? I really did. I think he complained about his defense, yes. even in some fairly dominant performances, Absolutely. and I think it's a media message. You Absolutely. Know? He's <laughs> giving a message. Giving a message. There's that shift again. See that late shift by Georgia. Trash. Plenty of time. Lofts one. He's got pitch wide open again. All the way out near midfield. Just a standard formation, but the motion confused the Georgia defense. Put the receiver in motion right here to the outside, and then you cross Pitts from across the field. A lot of time to throw this ball. Good protection by that Florida offensive line. It's been a little bit of a problem for Georgia applying pressure on the quarterback. They're tenth in the conference in sacks. And as Gary said, Trask had all day to deliver that one. Kadarius Tony on the handoff with blockers in front pushes one of his blockers down which was Pitts and he's getting back to the line of scrimmage and that's it. Jamie told you he returns from injury. He's a big play kind of guy. He's been out since week two with a shoulder problem. And Tony one play and out he comes. Gain nothing so it's second down and ten. Can Florida find any run game to help this offense, or is it going to be? There's a flag before. Yeah, that, that's going to be 12 men in the huddle. Florida's going to get penalized. They broke the huddle with 12 men. Illegal substitution on the offense. 12 players in the huddle. Five yard penalty. Second down. Boy, there's some self inflicted wounds yeah. with the substitution pattern in this game. Now, you know, the Florida offense is trying to keep this highly talented Georgia defense off balance with substitutions and motions, but you got to do it right. The team that rushes best has won 13 straight. And so far, Florida hasn't done anything on the ground. Play action. Down goes Trask, courtesy of Aziz Ojolari. Just when I said they were having trouble sacking the quarterback, number 13 comes up with one. Well, he lines up on the right side of the Georgia defense, the left side for this Florida offense. Nice stunt call that time, executed very well inside between he and Devontae Wyatt, and that put the sack on Kyle Trask. Ojolari, a redshirt freshman out of Marietta, Georgia, with the sack, four and a half for him this year, and a loss of 10. Timeout by misalignment this time by Georgia. Timeout. Boy, it's a Georgia. matching of wits yeah. and players around this formations. Chess formations, uh, all the pieces aren't in the right exactly. spot right now. Was she a covert Russian agent planted in America? Leslie Stahl's riveting prison interview with Maria Butina tomorrow on 60 Minutes. Third down at 25 after the Georgia timeout for the Gators from the 34-yard line. Deep zone, just like Florida did not execute earlier. Double pump by Trask, lays it out there incomplete. Intended for LaMichael Piran, and it's fourth down. Yeah, I thought it was a good timeout by Kirby Smart. It's third and very long. You can't have a mistake in lining up, give Florida a first down and keep the ball. You're going to get the ball back if you play your defense soundly, and they did. So our first punt of the game upcoming, Tommy Townsend 
Out there for Florida. Dominic Blaylock back deep for Georgia. Blaylock only had one return this year. High, deep kick. Blaylock waits on it, takes it at the 10. Got away from the first two. And maybe got six or seven out of it on the return. It's just under a minute and a half remaining in the quarters. We check in with Jamie. Well, I know we inched our way into November already, but it wouldn't be a Florida Georgia game without talking a little bit about the fact that we're around Halloween. So we acquired a few photos throughout the week of the people that are in this game and how they celebrated. You're looking at the Smart family. Wife Mary Beth was Alex Morgan. Julia was Drew Brees. Andrew was Miko Hardman. And Weston, well, he was his dad. And then there's Gary Danielson's <laughs> grandson pretending to be his great his grandfather Gary Danielson yeah, but when he was funny. injured and then my sideline producer Laura Dunham well she got talked into uh, being a skeleton for Halloween everyone is very festive on the CBS crew that was a good look Laura very, Gary very old grampy over there yeah. spread out on the turf yeah so that happens when you have seven surgeries in 13 years <laughs> yeah Andre Swift on the carry <laughs> And of course that group's always at the Georgia games be it on the road or in Athens. Well I wanted to make sure we said when Weston was Kirby Smart coach told us that he just went around yelling at everybody there for Halloween. Go. So <laughs> just really trying to and fulfill the whole coach aspect. And Jamie where's all the baby picks. Oh we she were. was a pumpkin. There they don't remember go. when they're four months old. <laughs> Brooke had about four different pumpkin outfits yes, over the did. course of two days. One cuter than the next. Yeah. Right? Second and eight. Brian Harrion will flush out of the backfield from looks toward that way. Again, he had plenty of time and throws complete. Lawrence Cager again, and he's getting very comfortable with number 15 and missed him when he wasn't in there. See, this is the type of route I like. I like the comeback rather than the back shoulder throw. There's more room to throw the ball, and the receiver can adjust to the ball when they, it's in the air. I thought that was a great, they call it a lock comeback against bump and run man. You don't just go with the fade and hope for an easy back shoulder. You actually run around, take him deep, come back down the stem. Perfect execution. Cager, the transfer from Miami. And he's been a big part of the passing game for Georgia so far this year. First down at the 29. DeAndre Swift has been bottled up so far, and he will be bottled up again here. Might have gotten two yards to bring the first quarter down to a close. Hard fought battle between the Gators and the Dogs. We played a quarter. Georgia on a black and chip field goal leads 3 0. We'll return to Jacksonville after this message and a word from your local station. Back in Jacksonville, Home Depot, SEC, CBS. Long time rivalry between Georgia and Florida. We played a quarter, and it's the Dogs by three as we open up quarter number two. Second down and nine for Jake Fromm on the handoff. James Cook. And Cook gets it down for a pickup of about five. Welcome back to the office, everybody. Brad Nestler, Gary Danderson. 15 minutes we played with these two defenses. We didn't expect it to be the Breeders' Cup or anything. No, no, no. Well, how many years has it been? Thir what is it, 13 years rushing yeah. won the game? First quarter, just to show you how this game is unfolding, Georgia had seven yards rushing, Florida none. <laughs> the seven yards were by a run by Jake Fromm. Different type of game this year. They only missed one third down conversion in the first quarter. That led to the field goal attempt. Here they've got third down and three. From scans of field down the middle and complete to the tight end Charlie Warner with a first down. He caught one ball last year in this game for 35 yards. They don't use the tight end a lot. That was a good looking play there. Watch DeAndre Swift handle the stunt here from Florida. Picks it up, gets Moon, and stones him. That's why Jake Fromm had time to throw that ball down the middle. Charlie Warner, whose uncle Scott was on the 1980 national championship team for Georgia, 
And that kind of all started with Buck Ballou to Lindsey Scott back in 80 in this matchup against the Gators. Swift. Oh. oh, he's banging it in there, but he's not getting much. And, then, and, and on that time, Bernie, number 30, didn't move an inch. Swift's running full speed. Now watch this tackle. Bang! Not a step back. A little help inside on the play by Zachary Carter, number 17. But boy, that was nose to nose inside by Amari Bernie, number 30. Only a two yard gain. Second down and eight. Tough sledding, 15 yards for Georgia and zilch for the Gators. And now DeAndre Swift shifts into. There's the two inside linebackers for Florida right there. Swift in the slot, looking at those two linebackers. Fromm throws the out, and Swift was the intended receiver, but it was a little bit too low. Did you think he should have had it? I thought it was catchable. Was it just outside of his reach? Players do not like balls below their waist. They can't see their hands and the ball at the same time. That one should have been caught. No. Got no excuse for that one. So Swift out. Carrying in. Third down and eight. Well, he got a good block, but not a good catch so far in the series. You told Kirby Smart he'd be five out of six on third down conversions at this point. He'd, yes. he'd more, be happy with that. More than three to nothing, he'd think. Here's a blitz. From again, kind of through in that same area. And, and Dominic Blaylock, the intended receiver, Marco Wilson, yes, came on was. the corner. Marco Wilson comes off the slot that time, and they are blitzing from the outside, right around the corner, right there. I think it's he's from the slot, or is he lined up? No, here he is, right from the slot. With Todd Grantham, a lot of time it's third down, and here we come. Yep. Third and Grantham is what it's called. <laughs> so Georgia's got a punt for the first time. Jake Camarda with Freddie Swain back around the 10 yard line. You look behind Camarda, end over end kick. Swain's going to let it go, and Georgia's going to have a nice punt here. That baby's going to go out of bounds at around the eight or nine yard line, and Jake Camarda will take that one. So the Florida offense in a bit of a hole and trailing by three when we come back. Tonight over on CBS Sports Network, primetime battle in the American as 17th ranked Cincinnati takes on ECU. Rich Waltz, Aaron Murray, Amanda, Aaron Murray and Amanda Baliotis bring you that one. And that's followed by number 21 Boise State against San Jose State. Carter Blackburn, Aaron Taylor, Jenny Dell on the call there. Let's see if Florida can spread the ball a little bit now. They've gone to pits. Let's see if they can find the rest of their receiving core. Which has three down to the bottom of the screen. And Trask to throw near his own goal line. Going to go deep sideline, back shoulder broken up by Georgia. And a nice play by D.J. Daniel. D.J. Daniel started the last four games because of the injury to Tyson Campbell, and he has made a name for himself. The junior college transfer, good phase, play the man, turn into the man, and then play the football through the arms of the receiver. Perfect technique by D.J. Daniel. Grass scans the field on second and ten. Gives it to Damian Pierce. Pierce found a hole off tackle, and he's got a good run. Pick up of nine. Well, Damian Pierce is the second leading rusher for this Florida team. A little stronger, a little stout, makes a nice cut, from, cut prouder that time, number 30, and gets to the outside for a very successful run. One of the 11 Gators from Georgia played his high school ball in Bainbridge. By the way, three straight downs, no Kyle Pitts on the field. Pierce stays in there on a third down in the yard. There's that shift again. And down goes Pierce. Georgia just swarmed him. A loss of about three. I think it was Devontae Wyatt, number 95, and then Tyler Clark that make the team. But the late shift is a strategy that they use. Watch him just real late on the play, Georgia. Take crowd go. See how quick it is too. It's designed to try to turn them off. Clay, it was all the way. Tyler was Clark, all the way. Play. Tyler Clark made a beautiful play on it. I think that shift kind of confused the blocking scheme for Florida there. They just did not handle it well. Townsend again hits it way up in the air. Fair catch 
Taken by Blaylock around the 41 yard line. Tell you a storyline so far in this game. Florida's short yardage offense has let them down. Yeah, it has. Georgia will have some pretty good field position to work with. Nursing a three point lead when we come back. Adam Zucker in New York with his Papa John's update. Keeping an eye on the top 10. Number four, Clemson, the highest ranked team in action. More of a tune up today against Wofford. Travis Etienne, 98 yards on his first six carries, including that touchdown going untouched as we go back to Ness, Gary, and Jamie. A 21 0 game there. Thanks, Zuck. Here, 3 0, Georgia. A little bit of a storyline, Ness. Jabari Zaninga for the second series, not in the football game. I wonder if he tweaked it after that early great play he made. He's not been out there. Zamir White in the Georgia backfield for the first time. With Jake Fromm. They fake it to him. Quick throw, the side on toss out to Eli Wolf, who was playing for Tennessee this time a year ago. And he's got it out to the 45 yard line. Georgia trying to win this game. It would be their third trip to the SEC title game, probably. And with that, we test your knowledge with today's Athlac trivia question Who's the only SEC East team to appear in three straight SEC championship games? We'll let you stew that one a little bit. Second down and six. Nick Fromm directing traffic. Gives it to Zamir right this time. And White's only got about two and a half. He'll bring up third down. And Zaninga's back on the field. Without Jabari Zaninga on the field, they can't use that bear look with three inside linemen and the two edge guys, Moon on one side and Zachary Carter on the other. He's back in the game now, though. Nobody can do anything on the ground so far. DeAndre Swift back in for Georgia. Third down at four. Rantham Buck, extra guy last time. Will he do it again? From quick throw across the middle. Caught. And it's Lawrence Cager. First down. I love the stop route on third down. You go punch. The outside player get a little motion to the outside. It creates a trip to the one side, and then you get that receiver right in front of you. Little motion, get the receiver stop route right in front of you. Pitch and catch. Put it on his face mask. Beautiful throw. Moves the sticks to the Gator 45. And Georgia six for eight on third down. Florida 0 for three. Mm. From the 45. Swift. Pretty good run that time. Picked up about five. Diabate made the stop from the linebacker position. Got the extra lineman in the game right now. Georgia had six offensive linemen on first down. Now Ben Cleveland goes out and they bring the tight end in. In the backfield will be Harry. Matt Landers joins the wide receiver core as well here for Georgia. At the 40 yard line. Four to think about coming off the corner from pump fakes once. Now goes deep. And a flag flies in CJ Henderson with a pass interference on Matt Landers. Brad, CJ Henderson did everything right until the end of the play. It's a double move. Watch this. Landers is going to stop. Go, Henderson's right in phase, and then what happens? Pass interference on the defense, number one. 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. He's done a lot of games where they've been letting a lot of that stuff go, okay? And now all, and you, Dan Mullins and I watch football on the bye week, and they're letting everybody do this. <laughs> oh, he's got his hand inside the collar of Landers, and that's what got caught. He put his hand in the collar. I Good said call. that Landers had joined the wide receiver core because he's 6'5", and there was no doubt that that's where Jake Fromm was going to aim that pass. 
from the get-go. Yeah, you can't panic. CJ should know that. He, he got hurt in last year's game, does everything right, and then right at the end, grabs the receiver. First down just outside the 25. High snap. Got it handed off to Herring. Maybe two and a half. David Reese. Leader in tackles, middle linebacker with the stop. Jamie? Well, they continue to use Jabari Zuniga in a very limited capacity. He's trying to keep that ankle warm on the sideline. Middle linebacker Jeremiah Moon also just went to the locker room, which is bad news because he's the one that rotates in with Jonathan Grenard. Yeah, good call, Jamie. Yeah, and I don't know if Grenard, coming off an injury himself, can go long distance a lot of plays. They probably want to keep his snap count down. This snap is second and seven for Georgia. At the Gator 22. From throws out in the flat a little bit low to Harry and caught this one. Trying to get to the sticks. He'll be two or three yards shy. And throw that pass to Swift earlier. He didn't get it. That one Harry and took around the knees. Still third and short. But third down has been good. Compared to the Kentucky game. But of course, that one was in a monsoon. Georgia back in the red zone. Hoping not to have to settle for a field goal attempt this time. Ball start. Number one on the offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. If you're going to move as a wide receiver, the sideline judge is right with you. And see, yeah, look at him. Yeah, Georgie. There comes number one. Georgie. He's got a little coaching there. <laughs> and out he comes. First penalty of the game, though, for the Georgia Bulldogs. That's true. Now, remember, this happened to Florida on third and short. And Georgia got to stop. Can the Florida defense step up here? Third down at six. They've got to get to the 15. That's Robertson in motion. Here comes the extra man for Florida Farm. Fires and it is caught by Cager. <laughs> CJ Henderson covered it so good he thought the ball would be to the outside and it ends up he tries to knock it down with the back of his hand now did the ball touch the ground there oh yeah that might be that's not going to be a catch the ball touched and then it moved boy gene's got to help us on this one i think that they're going to overturn this one well, all the florida fans are the previous play is under further review ruling on the field was a completion It's, we'll take all, another look. it's all right if the ball touches the ground if you control it. Gene? Agree, Gary. And, and the other part of that is if he has possession of that football, we would deem him to have possession of it and the ball made contact with the ground, then we could kind of not use the ground as, as important as it is. But here, it doesn't appear that the receiver has possession of that and uses the ground to actually help him make the completion. I, I think they overturned this one to incomplete. I think Lawrence could be up for an Academy Award for yes, the acting but, job he did. But how but. funny was that? C.J. Henderson is going for the back shoulder throw. <laughs> the ball is thrown inside. Remember, that that's a type of play that got Jake Fromm picked off at the South Carolina game. Exactly. Just like that. Again, the call on the field was completed pass. I think we're going to see a field goal try here. I do, too. Gerald Hodges is our replay official. Pass the word down to David Smith, our referee. Here it is. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Oh. First down. Oh. Okay. Surprise to all of us and Dan Mullen. Uh, Gene, welcome to the world of college football. <laughs> <laughs> We right at that moment. <laughs> the ball. Yeah, I agree, Gear. I think right at that moment, you see that football come away from him, yeah. and he has not possessed that prior to contact in the, the ground. The ball clearly touches the ground. Dan Mullen can only yeah. smile, smile sarcastically. Exactly. Like we need to play against that replay. First and goal for Georgia. Meanwhile, back to the live action at the 10-yard line. DeAndre Swift trying to get to the edge. DeAndre Swift down to the four. 
Remember what goal to goal was like last year, Gary? Yep, there were eight plays, seven stops. There was a penalty in there, but this was almost a legendary stand. Actually, it was. They held them to a field goal, but seven stops, and then the eighth one, they, Kirby takes the field goal and puts three points on the board. Can they do it again? Georgia fans are saying, why did you have to show those seven replays? Well, they won the game, I think. <laughs> Second to go. They switch the tight end Eli Wolf over on the right side. DeAndre Swift into the middle of the pack. Might have gotten a yard. That's it. I think Jake Fromm is looking over the bench said, let me let me have the ball here. You know what? We tried this. I remember just a year ago. <laughs> let me have the ball and try to with a zone keep and come off the edge. He looked over at the bench. And I think he wants the ball. Well, I'll tell you, Florida's going to come after him. This guy, who's he's covering? He's coming. Third to go. Play fake. Fromm throws out in the flat, completes it. It is a touchdown to Dominic Blaylock. I'll tell you, a nice design this time. The short motion by Georgia forced the bump and run coverage of Florida to back off. This motion by Blaylock, two guys in this wing spot, forced the defender not to be able to get his hand on him. Terry Dean could not get his hand on Blaylock, and that opened up the lane. Wonderful design by Georgia. Black and chip in for the point after. Up and good. Again, third down seems to be the charm today so far for the Georgia Bulldogs. First, there was a catch that maybe shouldn't have been, but Georgia says we'll take it. That was from the 10-yard line. They get down closer, and Jake Fromm finds Dominique Blaylock for the third time this year. And it's Georgia up 10-0. From high above, you see the red and black, and the orange and blue. Our aerial coverage sponsored by State Farm. And so far, it's the red and black with the lead, 10 nothing. A 59-yard drive and 10 plays. Well, Took six minutes and 19 seconds for Georgia to find the end zone. Now, if you're Florida, you're not going to win a lot of football games when the team goes eight for 10 on you on third down. That's 10 chances to get the ball back. And eight times Georgia kept it. You can't get off the field. You can't stop anybody. Let's take you back to the touchdown. Really a nifty little design player. You've got a wing, and then Blaylock goes in motion, and Trey Dean can't get close enough to him to get his hands on him. A double wing. Trey Dean tries to come up, and you see the pick by Curious Jackson. Doesn't even have to get a pick on the play, and Blaylock gets into the end zone. Very well designed play. Just another version of the Clemson play. <laughs> you know, the two receivers out, outside guy picks for the inside guy. We've seen it all over college football. Empty backfield for Kyle Trask here. As P. Ryan is down at the running back in a slot tail upside. Trask down the middle. And caught by Pitts off his shoe tops. And he's on the run all the way to Georgia territory. He's been the main man and maybe the only man so far today for the Gators. He was matched up with Richard LeCount that time, number two. One on one, it's a tough matchup for a safety. He's almost a wide receiver. And Kyle Trask puts him right on him that time. 29 yard pickup for the Georgia 46. Approaching the four minute mark of the quarter. Last play action, deep middle again, and again he's got his man. This time it's Freddie Swain. 
Two big chunk plays for Florida. This time it's Devon Wilson, number one, that is trying to play the slot position. Swain gets behind him. Look at the open space that Kyle Trask sees. It's a zone coverage that time. And, boy, if you're a guy like Trask who throws timing, he knows where that ball's going before the snap, and he put it right there. 29-yard pickup, and then a 23-yarder after it. Georgia delayed blitz. Trask fires to the corner. Incomplete. Intended for Copeland. And Eric Stokes was covering and says, uh-uh, I didn't touch him. One-on-one. -on -one. It's to the outside. Good phase. Perfect phase. No, nothing there. No. Good coverage. I think it's Emory Jones coming in the football game, isn't it? Indeed it is. The backup quarterback. Number five, Emory Jones. Redshirt freshman, also a Georgia native out of LaGrange. Tight end switches sides. And it's a run all the way for Jones, trying to get to the corner. Ooh. And it's Marty Rice who brought him down after a short game. Well, you're pretty sure he's going to run it. He's the third leading rusher on this Florida team. Now, the 116 yards coming into this football game. He uh, comes out, Trash comes back in. Yes, and it's a wholesale change for this. Once there's a substitution, Kirby's allowed to put his dime package in the game. He's got his pass rushers out there now. Florida 0 for 3 on third down. Third and 8 here. Piran will flush out of the Gator backfield. Trask looks right, comes back across the middle. It's tipped and incomplete. Somebody got a hand on it in the middle. Might have been Trayvon Walker. And I guess who it was. Former five-star recruit. And there's a bunch of them on this Georgia team. That substitution allowed number 44. I think that's him. He may be on the other side. He was on the other side. Defensive tackle. Gets some push inside against Heggie. Number 44 right there. And then gets his paw up last second. Just enough to get it away. That forces a field goal attempt. Of 38 yards. For Evan McPherson, who's eight of nine on the year. They haven't asked him to kick a lot. Kick is up and good. So two big pass plays from Trask to Pitts and then Swain. But then the tip pass forces the field goal. 54-yard drive and six plays. Gators had to settle for three. Adam Zucker in New York coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. Rick, BJ, and I get you caught up on today's action, including Texas A&M's Isaiah Spiller. Three touchdowns and 217 yards on the ground against UT San Antonio. Most yards by a freshman running back this season as we go back to Jacksonville. Just a taste of what you'll see coming up. Adam, Rick, and BJ will have first half analysis, scores, and highlights on the Geico Halftime Report. So Florida on the board with a field goal. I really thought that was a big drive for Florida. Remember, Georgia will get the ball to start the second half. Had to put some points on the board. They did it, 10-3, but just enough time for Jake Fromm. Remember last year in this game, he hit four passes to Isaac Nata to put him in a position to score. Almost the same play to Nata, about three of those. Brian Harrigan takes a kickoff on the fly at the 10. Nice little juke move, cuts outside, and a nice return out to the 32. You don't see a lot of kick returns. That was a good one. Third down's been the story. It was a year ago, Gary. Yeah, it is. Eight for ten. We talked about it. They did it through the air, one on the ground, but good protection. Get the ball to Cager on a crossing route. That was a zone coverage, third and long, over the middle of the Warner, and then the controversial one, catch or not, he's still got a play, and then Dominic Blaylock puts it away for a touchdown. If you get a chance, usually a couple of those third downs, you're going to score off of it. Most of the half in a couple of years. Yeah, and because of that, the plays are tilted strongly in Georgia's favor, 33 to 19. DeAndre Swift has been bottled up today. This one out to the 41-yard line. Earlier we asked you the athletic trivia question, which was, when's the last time an SEC East team made three straight trips to the championship game? Florida. The Gators under the head ball coach. And this guy wears a visor because of the head ball coach. <laughs> yes. 
Second and three. That's Robertson across the field in motion. Swift trying to get to the edge. Got a block. Cuts back and got the first down. Again, no big runs, but he's moving the chains. I mean, just Robinson did a good job getting the block on the edge that time, allowing Swift to get to the edge and make a positive play for the first down. I would wager a guess that DeAndre has never worked harder for 26 yards in his life. Last year he had 104 on 12 carries. Today that's what he has on his 12 carries in the first half. He had a lot of yards late in this game when they wore this Florida defense down, and that's what's happening again. This time gets around one man. Here he goes. Swift. Finally broke free. And Ventrell Miller, 51, had a chance for the tackle. Inside linebacker. Watch him jump right over him. Just goes down and shoe dust them. Marco Wilson had a chance as well, but what a run by Swift. To the 24, and now Fromm throwing to the corner oh, just man. off the hands of Matt Landers. Georgia went hurry up, and they went for all of it on and, that throw. And look at the matchup James Coley had. The offensive coordinator produced a matchup with Cager go going against, no, excuse me, Landers going against a linebacker to the outside. Amari Bruni is going, oh my gosh, I have, this is a bad matchup, and I thought that was going to be a touchdown. So second and 10 at the Gator 24 after that 30-yard run by Swift. Brian Harrion was in the slot and now joins from in the Georgia backfield. And it's a draw play to Harrion. Nothing doing. Lost about a half yard. Still plenty of time. Georgia has two timeouts. Third down and long. Zachary Carter made the stop as we're under a minute. Swift on the sideline right now. They don't lose a lot with Harry, and especially as a receiver, he's as sure-handed as Swift is. Well, let's see if Todd Grantham will bring some pressure. He's tried everything. The zone didn't work. Man-to-man -man didn't work. Well, they bring people to help out in the pass rush. Can Georgia pick up its ninth oh. third down? <laughs> and Jabari Zaniga, I think, jumped in the neutral zone unless he was drawn okay. off. Okay, Isaiah Wilson is 360 pounds. He's six foot seven. Oh my goodness! Offside on the defense. Number 92, five yard penalty. Third down. Just in case the official didn't see it. <laughs> Wilson is 6'7", 341 in a minute. He showed some agility on that. When you're 340 and you start going backwards, you're not going to go back forwards again. He barely gets there. Now watch this. No. Oh, yeah. oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's in the big cat category right there. <laughs> well, it makes it a shorter third down for Georgia. <laughs> I, I tell you, that's an athlete, though. <laughs> that was a good move. As the sun comes out and the shadows hit the field here in Jacksonville, referee having a chat with Kirby Smart. He's like, am I gaining the down or am I moving the chains or which am I doing? And Jake Fromm is wondering the same thing. Because the foul occurred while the clock was running and caused the clock to stop, there's a 10-second runoff. Georgia has declined the option for the 10-second runoff. The clock will start on the snap. So 28 seconds remaining. Georgia with both its timeouts. And it's third and six. All right at the Gator 20 yard line. Clock will start at the snap, which is right now. From pressure coming. They pick that up. Now he's scrambling, looking for a receiver. Throws to the end zone. Just off the hands of Lawrence Cager. It would have been a touchdown. Had he been able to stretch out and hold on. Well, Brian Herrian does a good job of allowing. Jake Fromm, a little time to get out of the pocket, peels back, and then Fromm has a free throw here. 
But a, finally, a stop from that Florida defense. Had an opportunity to get it, but just out of his reach. Rodrigo Blankenship hit one earlier. This will be a 37-yard field goal attempt. Hit from 31 a little bit earlier in the game. 13 out of 15 on the season. Uh, whistles blow. Timeout. Florida. Their third Florida takes its final timeout. Time out. <laughs> 18 seconds remaining after the timeout. Blankenship for Georgia to try a 37 yard field goal to stretch the Georgia lead back to 10. The kick is up and good. Georgia tacks on three more. They gave Jake Fromm and company and DeAndre Swift a little too much time to work in there up by 10 again. Thursday on CBS faith family and football rule on an all new young Sheldon Thursday at 8 7 central on CBS. Take a look at the St. John's River here in Jacksonville in a city of bridges uh, seven major ones. The sun is out but over there in the corner of the end zone the skies don't look too good. This could be returnable. From the goal line. Patrick Cleveland. And Cleveland got away at the 15 but he's not going to make it to the 20. Amir Speed got down on the special teams to make the stop. Next Saturday, best game from the best conference. Also the biggest game of the college football season. Number one LSU. Number two Alabama. In Tuscaloosa at Bryant Denny. High powered LSU offense. A high powered Alabama offense. It all starts with a drive to Atlanta at 2.30 Eastern. The SEC on CBS. Hope you join us. And It'll what be a, fun. And what a different feel with LSU coming in with a quarterback that's going to look over there and go, oh, I see openings. <laughs> well, here we played a half in the biggest game in the SEC East of the season. We'll worry about the West next week, but we've got a half left here in Jacksonville. And as they head to the locker room, the eighth-ranked Georgia Bulldogs leading the sixth-ranked Florida Gators by 10. Georgia won it a year ago in a battle of top 10 teams. They had the lead going to the locker room this year. As we go down to Jamie. Coach, before that last drive, you had nearly three times the pass yards that you did the rush. DeAndre Swift kind of took care of that for you. How important is it to balance that out to win the second half? Well, we got to be able to run the ball better. That's what we got to do mostly. We did a good job converting third downs, but those won't always be there. How did you disrupt them defensively to only hold them to three points? Well, uh, we had a couple big stops. You know, we stopped them on third down. They've hit some big plays on us. They got some really good players and some good weapons. Coach, thanks. Thank you. You saw when Kirby has the lead in this matchup, he's been perfect. Can he stay that way? We'll find out. We play the half. Georgia 13, Florida 3 at the break as we head to Adam Zucker and the guys in the New York studio. Zucker. Woof. Thanks, Ness. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Rick, BJ, and I will discuss some of those first-half mistakes we saw and look ahead to next week's colossal clash of one versus two after this word from your local station. At halftime, Georgia with a 10-point lead over the Florida Gators here in Jacksonville. Each week, we'll be celebrating college football's 150th anniversary with a taste of tradition presented by Sonic. And here's Jamie. Brad, the annual gathering of Florida and Georgia has provided college football with some memorable moments, and many of its best players are forever enshrined at the Florida-Georgia Hall of Fame. Two great Bulldog defenders were honored, and undersized linebacker Rennie Curran had back-to-back -back 100 tackle seasons. Jarvis Jones is forever revered by dog fans everywhere for his incredible strip tackle of Jordan Reed that won the 2012 game. Florida defensive tackle Brad Culpepper was a captain of the Gators' first SEC championship team in 1991, and linebacker Brandon Spikes was the defensive star on those great Gator championship teams a decade ago. His massive hit on the second play of the 2008 game is an indelible moment etched in Florida football lore. Congratulations to the new inductees, and what a way to celebrate 150 years of college football. Four great players. There'll be some in the second half of this game that might end up joining them at dinner sometime in the future. Georgia up 13-3 at halftime. Prompt 
Throws out in the flat, completes it. It is a touchdown to Dominic Blaylock. Back for the third quarter. The Home Depot, SEC at CBS in Jacksonville. And a 13-3 halftime lead for the eighth-ranked team of the country, leading number six. Georgia will get the football first to start the third quarter. McPherson will tee it up for the Gators. We're going to have to find some more offense in the second half. Zamir White and Brian Harrion are back deep for the Dogs. Third quarter, here we go. Harrion takes it at the one. Had a nice return in the first half. This one's not too bad either. Out to the 27-yard line as we welcome you back to the booth. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson along with our crew here. Dave Moulton, Clint Deans, Barb Hanford, Mackenzie Lewis, George Hill, Scott Milikoff. We're all up here and ready to go. Not a lot of offense. Five first downs for Florida in the yeah. first half for him to, to pitch the tight end. It was, and only one catch by any other receiver, wide receiver, that group of wide receiving receivers for Florida. That's been bad news. Third down is a mess for Florida. And Jake Fromm is spreading the ball around. Seven different players have caught a pass from Fromm in the first half. They set up shop at the 26-yard line. Robertson in motion. Fromm scans things, throws complete to Robertson. Oh, I beg your pardon, that's Lawrence Cager, who's been his favorite target today. Jamie. Well, a lengthy conversation with Dan Mullen coming out of the locker room, half of which was spent him harping on the referees and the officials in that game. But I said, you can't just tell your players that. What did you have to tell them in the locker room? He said, well, it's a snowball effect. We have to get off the field. Our offense only ran 20 plays, but we can't get back on if we can't execute on third downs. By the end of it, he said, I'm not that concerned. I think we're actually playing as best as we can. Well, he's, he's right about all of those things. Yeah, but it's now 40 to 20 plays. DeAndre Swift, who had 30 of the yards to get Georgia down to field goal range late in the second half, lost two there. And the first half game trends, Jake, Gary said, moving it around, doing a good job on third down, not glaring statistics by any stretch of the imagination. 76 of Trask's 106 went to his tight end, so he needs some more help. And 30 out of the 44 on one carry for Swift, who's really kind of been held in check with the exception of that one play. And here's Georgia living the dream on third down today so far. With a third and seven to open up the third quarter. From down the middle and complete to Harry and out of the backfield. And another first down. Well, Florida hangs their hat on four man rushing and putting pressure on the quarterback. So, excuse me, I think it's Grenard this time comes around on the stunt. Look at that protection. Easy pocket, no pressure with the four man rush on third down. That's been the story. That offensive line for Georgia has been keeping the quarterback clean. Grantham is going to have to bring extra blitzers. Pickens, Robertson, Cager, the three wideouts for Fromm. And whistle blows this one dead. Prior to the snap, ball start, 55 offense, five yard penalty, first down. Trey Hill, the center with the penalty. Well, everybody loves to throw the football if you've got protection. Andrew Thomas, Solomon Kinley, Trey Hill, Cade Mays, sometimes it's Ben Cleveland, Isaiah Wilson at right tackle. They have kept Jake clean and able to scan around, move his feet, feel no pressure to him, and pick out throws over the middle. And basically everywhere else, too. First and 15 at the penalty. It backs it up around the 38-yard line. From pump to the left. Wants to come back to the right and is just going to lay it out there for Harry. Did he catch that? He did. That's a running back making that catch. He plucked one early. On a nice throw from Fromm. But this one he goes out with one hand. Oh, I don't know. 
They're going to, I'm sure Georgia's going to try to get up there. Will they get another look? I think the replay official will want to see if there's another angle. It happened near the Georgia bench. The previous play is under further review. Ruling on the field was a completion. Let's see if there's another look. Did the ball hit the ground? Well, they already had one go their way earlier to Cager. Well, that's tough to tell. I don't see any movement, though, this time, do you? If it touched the ground. Gene Steratore, our rules official. Gene, what do you think? I like this one as a catch from what I've seen so far, guys. I, he makes an unbelievable effort, and I don't see that football hitting the ground on any of the replays that we've seen so far. And, and Gene, nothing to overturn the call as a completed catch, right, so far? Exactly, Gary, because we do have a ruling on the field of a catch, so there isn't anything there that's jumping out at me that says to me that it's, it's in you know, 100% conclusive to, to overturn it, you know, something definitive there. Right. It's funny, the Georgia fans here are looking up at the Jumbotron and they're cheering, and the Florida fans are just sort of holding their breath right now. I think the ball definitely touches the ground, but I don't see much movement. Here's a call. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. And give Brian Harry in credit. I said earlier, he's very good as a receiver coming out of the backfield, but boy, that was a uh, super catch. That was a great scouting report by you because this is a great catch by anybody at any level. The guys in the big leagues would be proud of this catch. Holy cow. Sometimes overlooked number 35, the senior out of Douglasville, Georgia, Amen. because of all the great backs they've had. But Absolutely. he plays every down like it's going to be his last. First down in Florida territory at the 43. Play action from pressure coming from Grenard. He got rid of it and he got it on a strike to Lawrence Cager again. All the way to the 13 yard line. Marco Wilson here is what we call a bail technique. He's showing man to man, but watch him bail. And that allows Cager to run his square in 90 degrees, perfect route, and the ball is right on the numbers. And on that snap, Georgia had six offensive linemen and on the field, so it showed run to the Florida defense, and they dropped for the play action pass. Another crafty call. I think James Coley is having a good game mixing up his game plan. 30 yard pickup to the 13. Perry will get stopped for no game by to Daryl Slayton. You don't throw these 20 yard square ins if you don't do a good job. Cade Mays is at the tight end position. That's an extra offensive lineman. Look at that pocket. Bernard gets in there late, but not soon enough for the throw over the middle. DeAndre Swift comes back in to the Georgia backfield on second and 10. This almost feels like a, that this Florida defense has to hold Georgia to a field goal here. Pat Grantham has to find some pressure on the quarterback. From the throw outside is incomplete intended for Tyler Simmons. Marco Wilson on the coverage. Third and ten. Here's the down. Usually third and ten. The defense is all excited about it for this game. The Florida fans are going, uh-oh, third and long. Yeah. First downs on seven of those eight completions. Does he have another one in him right here? And remember, four touchdowns a year ago on third down when they were eight for 14. Same story one year later. Three of those were off the arm of Fromm. The other was a run by Swift. And they're behind that offensive line of Georgia here from the 13 yard line. Safety blitz. Here comes the rush. The throws complete to Werner to the 10, but that's it. And he'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, Amari Burton does a good job that time. He knows that Jake Fromm's going to have to get rid of it quickly, so he lays back, allows the catch in front of him, come up and make a safe tackle, force the field goal. And that's what they needed to do. They made the stop, kept everything in front of him, and now Blankenship will try another one. He's good from 31 and 37. 
Ty Grantham said, the heck with it. I'm bringing the safety. I'm not going to watch another one. Right. So Rodrigo from 27 yards away. Kick is up there inside the right upright. Good. So Georgia took the opening possession of the third quarter, kept it over five minutes on a 64-yard march to get three more. Between what we believe and what we fear, there is something much deeper happening. A new evil Thursday at 10, 9 central, only CBS. Well, to open up any quarter, or any uh, third quarter, I should say, with any kind of points you take it, Gary, they had to settle for three, and that's good for Florida's defense, but it's going to make it harder now on the Gator offense. It, it is, but it, Kyle Trask has to open up the offense to other receivers and spread this Georgia defense out. Only one reception from Freddie Swain, Grimes, Jefferson, Hammond, Cleveland, Copeland. No catches in the game. Amazon Music brings you today's scholar athletes. Jake Fromm, the quarterback from Georgia. Michael Piran, the tailback from Florida. Amazon Music showing their commitment to the investment of our future by donating $1,000 to Georgia and Florida's general scholarship fund. Congratulate those two young guys. There's one of them, Piran, in the backfield with Kyle Trask from the 25. They fake it to Piran. Trask going to throw to the sideline, and it's caught by Trayvon Grimes. Here's what Gary said. Somebody else has got to make a catch, and he just did. Yeah, I, I just wonder who pushed off of who here because the flag came in late. Piran gets a pretty good block on that play off the edge to allow the deeper throw, but who's pushing on who? I would say it's going to go against Georgia here. That's what the field judge is pointing yeah, in that, that direction. That, the point leads. Pass interference on the defense, number 27. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. You've got to spread out the field and make a defense cover all 53 yards. You also have to make them, you could see, pushing by both players there. And I, I didn't know which way that was going to go when I watched it. And it could have gone against Grimes on that play just as easily. But when you are not. The previous play is under further review. Ruling on the field was an incomplete pass. Oh, he missed it. The drop. He must have stepped out. Is I was going to say, uh, first of all, when they take the play and not the penalty, it's because the play yes. apparently was incomplete. I missed that part. Oh, I thought it was a caught ball. So did I. Let's see if he steps out before he catches it. Right. I thought he got his I thought he got his right foot down. So did I. Well, that's a oh, catch, isn't no, it? No, no. If he's going backwards, he has to get his heel down, not just his toe. Maybe that's the call. Gene could help us here. Oh, I think his heel, did his right heel come down? When you're going backwards, you have to get the whole foot in bounds. Gene, what are you seeing? Gary's 100% right with the toe heel aspect. I think that he gets the entire foot in uh, from where I'm standing uh, right now, but boy, it's really tight. Um, you know, on a play like this, I hope they don't go stands with this. You've got everything in front of you. Let's make a decision one way or the other. The foot is in or the foot isn't. And I just think he gets that entire foot in. It's an amazing catch. After further review, the receiver maintained possession and got his foot down for completion. It right. will be first down at the 48-yard line. The defensive pass interference penalty is declined. First down, Florida. There you go. Just a little quirky rule. If you're going forward, you only have to drag your toe. When you're going backward, as Gene told you, you have to get the entire foot down for it to be complete. And they ruled he did. So first down at the 48 on a tremendous catch. By Trayvon Grimes. Going back to it, you got to force Georgia to cover all five eligible players on the field, not just the tight end. Trask looking left. Now comes back over the middle late, but he got it complete. Josh Hammond with the catch. And as uh, Dan Mullen was talking to Jamie at half and said, we're still okay. One of the reasons he may say that 
is the last two years at Florida, his teams have won six games when they were behind three this year, South Carolina, Miami, and when Kyle Trask came in against Kentucky. Remember, they scored 21 points against South Carolina in the fourth quarter alone, and Malik Herring came around the backside and got a piece of Trask, and that's why that ball wobbled out of there. Yeah, number 72, Stone, Stone Forsyth, number 70, comes up, and he does not handle the edge rush around the corner. Those defensive ends want to get around, hold it with one hand, and then rip for that back arm of the quarterback. And he got it. And third down for Georgia has been good. Not so hot for Florida. 0 for 4. That's third and 5. Three wide outs up to the top for Trask. Delayed blitz, crossing rock complete, but well short of the first down. Yeah, but there's a penalty. I wonder if Divide Wilson, number one, is going to get called around Kyle Trask to the top of the field. I wonder if he got an illegal jam or his hand to the face of Kyle, Tr uh, excuse me, of Kyle Pitts to the top of the field. Number 84. Offside on the defense, number 13. Five-yard penalty from the pre previous spot results in a first down. Lined up offsides obviously was called. Ojolari going out. He was the guilty party. And a far line of scrimmage is right. Right there, that's where the call is made. Boy, it, it looks like Caroline, doesn't it? I <laughs> know. That was a tough call. We weren't looking quite straight down the line. And at any rate, first down. At the Georgia 38, Trask having a look to the sideline. Looks a little confused. Maybe a lot confused. Now he's got it handled. Plenty of time, still 10 seconds to go on the play clock. Georgia, the blitz off the corner. Trask backpedals in trouble. Get rid of it. Going down way back at the 41 yard line. Jordan Davis, Malik Herring and company bring him down. All right, it's a first down call. This could be the lack of experience from Kyle Trask not being a three-year player. Didn't play a lot of high school ball on first down here. If you don't get what you want, not there, toss it away. Live for another play, and he ends up making a huge mistake, and now it's second and a bundle. You know, as a play caller, you're just hoping your quarterback can bail you out of a bad play. And what did he do? Put you in even to a worse position on second down. Lost 19 yards on the sack. Football all the way back. The 43 yard line. Now they're going to get a delay of game. Florida offense going the wrong direction. Delay of game on the offense, number 11. Five-yard penalty, second down. Listen, there's a lot going out there. When you're the quarterback for a passing team, the play before, you're trying to get the right protection, and now you get sacked, and all of a sudden, you forget to look at the play clock. The basics, they always come back and haunt you. They had a first and 10 at the Georgia 38. Now it's second and 34, their own 38. Not now, a lot in the playbook now, for this. Now you can't make a big mistake. Quick throw is in and out of the hands of Pitts. And now it's third down in a mile. That guy's a good play caller, but there's not a lot of third and 34s no. on that sheet. And as you said, the worst thing that could happen is to make a mistake here and turn the ball over. Punting's not the worst thing yeah, in the world. I wonder if you just chuck one deep, hope you get an interference or an acrobatic catch. And they got four receivers to trash left. And we're going to keep it on the ground. Yeah. And that got about two yards. Devontae Wyatt made the stop. It's fourth down. That was actually the formation that Florida ran. In the game against LSU, when they popped the long 70 yard run, they went on balance to the wide side of the field and tried to crease them to the short side. Uh, no crease. Of course, sacks count, but minus nine 
When we said the team that wins the rushing battle usually wins this game, minus nine's not going to work. No, but you know the total sacks in the game is 29, so even then there's no rushing yard if you took those off. High up to the punt. Fair catch. Kind of a tough one for Blaylock, but he made it. And Georgia's got it back on offense with a little over six and a half going in the third quarter. A 13-point lead for the Georgia Bulldogs in Jacksonville. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Ram Trucks. Papa John's. The Home Depot. And by Dos Equis. Back in Jacksonville, and the sun's still out. Looks like that hint of possible rain has gone away. Our aerial coverage sponsored by State Farm. Georgia with the ball back. That's checking with Jamie. A couple of digs in the linebacking core for Florida. Jeremiah Moon, who went to the locker room in the first half, he is out for the rest of the game. He's got a boot on that left foot. Amari Bernie also was in the tent just a bit ago, so it's something to watch defensively. And they need all the defense they can get right now. Georgia, 13-point lead. James Cook in motion. Over the middle, a little jump pass to DeAndre Swift. Put the stiff arm out there. Now he's got blockers in front. DeAndre Swift into Gator territory around the 48-yard line. This is what you call an inverted screen, okay? Is this really a screen if the player that catches it is in front of the screen? What do you call this, Ness? I don't know. What do you do that? The three linemen are actually behind the guy that catches the ball. DeAndre says, I'm going to go left and then cut back, and by that time, you guys will catch me. <laughs> exactly. Marco Wilson takes one. And the, and the problem with the injuries that Jamie told you about and the plays that mount up, Georgia's drive in this game. They've had the ball five times. This is the six. 16 plays, eight plays, 10 plays, seven plays, and nine plays. Florida can't get them off the field. And that's DeAndre Swift on the ground. And he's got it to the 41-yard line. Number eight leading number six right now. As the AP top ten looked like this, LSU, Alabama, Ohio State all idle. That's the first time since 1996 that the top three teams aren't in action. Clemson's putting it on Wofford right now. Penn State also, they've got a date with Minnesota next week. And, of course, the winner of this one is not only in the driver's seat, it might be more like the hood ornament to get to Atlanta. Absolutely, because not only do you have a one-game lead, you win the tiebreaker against Florida if you win this game, or the opposite way for Florida against Georgia. Swift got eight. Harrion takes his place on second down and two. And Brian Harrion gets the call. A little delay, puts his head down, and he's got the first down. Talk about those big offensive tackles, that huge, massive line. Watch Thomas, injured a year ago in this football game. Watch him handle the end man line. He's going to come back late, right at the end, and get the key block. You move outside, and you look at Reese, number 33, your linebacker, and then you turn. So we saw the athletic ability of Isaiah Wilson when he flipped backwards. Uh -huh. There's a, Andrew Thomas's a, a athletic ability on that one. Andrew Thomas, a midseason All-American, considered a surefire number one draft choice. And he got one and a half blocks on that last play. Now this is that five-man front right here. Got that bear look inside, three men on, three inside players come off the edge. Aaron trying to bounce it out. Now cuts back and will lose a yard. That's been their best rush defense right there. And they put the three men inside against the center and the two guards, and then the two edge defensive ends or outside linebackers, whatever you want to call them, they crash and handle them. You can't get any movement coming from the backside. There's nowhere to go. You cannot, you can, it's hard to run away from the speed on this Florida defensive end. That time, Bernard was all over that play. No place, no room to cut back. Florida came in as the top sack team in the SEC with 29, but Jake Fromm has been pretty clean today because of that Georgia offensive front. Second down and 10. Here's a toss to the end of Swift. Swift to the edge. Swift to the end zone. Touchdown. There's a flag. I think it's Matt Landers, number five, and it's too bad because Charlie Warner, number 89, does it. Colby, number five on the offense. 
10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Three plays, second down. Charlie Warner, 89, does a fantastic job of turning it up, but your wide receiver at the end just grabs and gets the holding penalty. And the gates of 37-yard touchdown run. And by the way, this is Trey Dean. Terry Dean, the old quarterback, is saying, Gary, could you try Trey? I played in this game enough. I'd, I'd just assume what somebody else would be called. So that backs it all the way up outside the 45-yard line. I called him Terry three or four times in the first half. Terry actually was the starting and winning quarterback in this game back in his day. Lives in Naples at this time. Brian Herring comes back into the Georgia backfield and it comes out as a receiver in the slots. DeAndre Swift to get a breather. Second down at 18 now from over the middle. Herring tried to get this one and couldn't quite hold it. Ventrell Miller had good coverage. And Jake is saying, I'm going to flag. No, that was good coverage. Georgia's got a guy shaking up. I think it's Cade Mays. It is. Ben Cleveland's coming in the football game. Now the Florida crowd's got something to cheer about here. They finally force a third and longer than long. Yeah, they need about 10, 11 yards for a long field goal. But still, 9 out of 12 is something. Can they pick up their 10th? From in trouble comes forward he is going to run and a lateral over to Harry <laughs> pretty cool that was got it to the 36 and that might be good enough to give Rodrigo Blankenship the shot you're talking about Heron is going what what I didn't know you could do that <laughs> I was just going I'm yelling nice run Jake get down slide don't get hurt and I think those extra yards might put it in a position they're going for oh, they're it gonna I guess stay. are they going to try to dry them off sides too far for a field goal I don't know. Blankenship's got great range, and maybe they did jump. There's flags down. And they have to separate some guys in the backfield for the first time today. This could work both ways, though. If it's against Georgia, they'd be out of field goal range. Prior to the snap, false start, 66 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. And now you gotta wonder if you gotta consider punting this ball. The Florida offense has struggled. Your defense is in control. Pin I think you back. gotta kick Pin this. them back, absolutely. Well, half the crowd doesn't like it. Well, I wouldn't be booing if I was a Georgia I, fan. It's fourth down and in about 15. I don't know. If, I, I really don't know if it's the Florida fans booing or the Georgia fans booing. I can't tell either. <laughs> we can tell colors, but we can't tell right. who's yelling. So Jake Camardo dropped one inside the 10 in the first half. Try to do it again. This one looks like it might be too deep. And it is. So Florida gets a stop. Courtesy of a holding call on the Georgia offense that took away a touchdown that might have started to sort of ice this thing. And now it's still wide open. Gators on offense when we come back. 16 to 3, Georgia in front. Just under three minutes remaining in the third quarter. Some news and notes. Trojans to name Mike Bone, their athletic director, and then all the speculation will be about Coach Helton's job and whether Urban Meyer is interested. Sam Jagovich passed away this week, former Miami athletic director, part of three national championships. He hired Jimmy Johnson as a coach. And our longtime friend, Rogers Redding. Yes. The coordinator of football officials to retire after this season. And he, along with Steve Shaw, Gene Steratzor, I always call those guys and I go, I don't get it. And they go, you know what, you're never going to. <laughs> I'm going to miss his reviews. Oh, and my he goodness. Explains all the tough calls all the time. Sends us an email and a video. Or at the 20 yard line can Florida get some offense going quick slant. There's a good start and about a 13 yard pickup to Freddie Swain uh, quick RPO right off the shoulder that time of Monty Rice number 32. You look at him one step by Rice to his left and he throws it right off his right hand. The defensive coordinators are telling the linebackers now don't be making tackles at the line of scrimmage. Make sure the ball's handed off. 
We'll take tackles two yards downfield. Stop the RPO. They fake the handoff to Piran. The throw is low, but it's caught. Again, it's Freddie Swain. Back to back first downs. Now remember this. Florida team, as we mentioned, has had experience coming back. They trailed Kentucky. Kyle Trask's first game, 21 to 10. Had the big fourth quarter against South Carolina. Yes. First down at the 45. Trask going right back to the left side and driving for about seven yards. A tough catch by Tyree Cleveland. And now they're starting to spread the ball out. As you see, it's six wins by trailing. At any point in the fourth quarter. So this isn't even the fourth quarter yet. They're going to got 90 time. seconds left. Exactly. Second and short. They haven't had that luxury too much today. Empty backfield. So Trask to throw. The quick slant is swaying again. And right now Georgia's having trouble keeping number 16 from catching the football. Yeah, this time he gets inside Mark Webb, number 23 to the right side for Georgia. Easy. Again, that's a pretty accurate throw, though. Not bad coverage on that slant. Forced a perfect throw, and Kyle did it. They haven't been to the red zone yet. They're getting a little bit closer. Trask scans the field. Now he's in trouble. And he's going to go down and pop the line of scrimmage. Nolan Smith brought him down. Monty Rice took away his throw. When Kyle looked to his right to dump it off, the linebacker, number 32, Monty Rice, was in his vision, and that's what forced it. Watch it. Coming out, Damian Pierce goes on the wide route. When he looks over to dump it off, he sees a red helmet. That forces him to go right up the middle and save the play. Actually got about a half yard, second down and nine. But he didn't lose yards. Right. Trask, short throw in the flat, complete to Pierce. Put down as soon as he caught it. Rice and company are there, and that's going to bring the third quarter to a close. I don't want to say that Florida's not running the ball well, but I heard Steve Spurrier said they need to run it. <laughs> if he said that, <laughs> it's really been a rough three quarters. <laughs> and at the end of three quarters, Georgia in front, but Florida on the move. The last 15 minutes will determine a lot, like who plays in Atlanta maybe, huh? End of three, 16 3 Georgia will return to Jacksonville right after this message and a word from your local station. A good look at the start of the fourth quarter and the orange and blue on one half and split right down the middle with the red and black of the Georgia fans. And a third down and six for Florida to start this fourth quarter, an all important one for both these teams in the SEC East. Kyle Trask with LaMichael Piran now flushing out of the backfield. Trask, quarterback keeper on a draw, and he didn't get there. Yeah, but I think this is four down territory. So Trask is about two yards short. It's been a day as we welcome you back to the booth where Florida has had no running game at all. Yeah, they gained 21 yards total in the game, but they lost. 29 in sacks, thus they have a negative situation in the rushing game. But that play was called because you knew Dan Mullen was going to go for it on fourth down. This will be a throw, though. Fourth and a really long yard. Georgia, are they offside? Trask over the middle. It's complete. It doesn't matter. It's a first down, and it's Swain again. I thought the left side of the defense was in the neutral zone, but it doesn't matter on the completion. Off timing route. Eric Stokes in coverage again another good ball thrown by Kyle Trask good coverage on the play had to put it low in his pocket and he put it right there first down at the 23 of Georgia they fake it to P Ryan Trask is in trouble got away and throws to the end zone flag is down it's a touchdown Van Jefferson Hold on here. Let's see which way this is called. J.R. Reed and Van Jefferson are right there fighting for the ball. I think it was J.R. Reed. Let's see which way this is called.
And Jefferson has not had a catch. Out and up. Pass interference on the defense, number 23. Penalty is declined. Results of the play, touchdown. Mark Webb was the guy that was in the coverage that time. Van Jefferson, the best route runner for this Florida team. Good throw by Kyle Trask. The ball is across the line. Now they'll look at it here with our pylon can. Yes, breaks the plane when he caught it. When he caught it, I think it broke the plane. What a drive that Florida needed. Remember the fourth down throw, the pocket throw he made with tight coverage. Freeze it right as he catches it. It's not over then, but as he puts his hands on the ball, let's see if it breaks the play. They're going to review it. Boy, that's really close, isn't it? That is really close. Remember, it's called a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. Ruling on the field with a touchdown. The fans are chomping at the bit. Kyle Trask did a good job of getting out of the way and delivering the ball. Gene Steratore is with us, Gene. Gary's done a great job with explaining this play early, and it is the furthest most point of this football. This receiver gets everything he can or gets once he possesses. Right there, there's possession. I think the nose of that football breaks the plane as he's airborne. And listen, even though he's airborne, as he gets driven back, once he lands, he still gets the forward progress when he possesses this football. Yeah, he's so it is at the point where he possesses, and I think we've got a touchdown. It's going to be tough to overturn it. Is it because, Gene, that Mark Webb, the defender, 23, contacts him, that completes the catch? If That's he... exactly right, Gary. And, and it also gives him his, his forward progress to that entire place because he did not take himself backward on his own. The defender helps him go backwards. So, yes, he gets all the progress because of the contact. It's actually it, right when he catches the ball over his head is when I think it breaks the plane. Not when he brings I it agree. down. Not when he brings it down. That's actually too late there. It's when he first grabs it. Higher, higher, right up at the top of it. It is really close, though. Right there is where, and once he brings it, he brings it back short of the touchdown line. Now we'll see what Gerald Hodges, our replay official, and David Smith, our referee on the field, is, think it, about it. Again, do they have enough to overturn it? Remember, the call on the field was touchdown. Kyle Trash did a great job. Remember, on third down, he ran the quarterback draw. On fourth down, play action pass, he escaped the pocket. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Out and up. Out and up. Out and up. 50-50 ball, and Van Jefferson goes against it. A huge play to cap the longest drive both in yardage and number of plays today for Florida. That went nine plays, the longest they've had. McPherson, the point after is up and good. So it feels like Georgia is dominating the game. They score a touchdown brought back by a holding penalty, but they've not been able to score touchdowns, and all of a sudden, Florida back in the game. 80 yards and nine plays. Van Jefferson's fourth receiving touchdown has the Gators right back in it. Check out the new hit show about family, friends, and everything in between. The Unicorn, new episode, Thursday, 8.30, 7.30 Central on CBS. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Jamie Erdahl, and our CBS crew in front of 84,789 at TIAA Bank Field, where Florida's just gone 80 yards to get to within a score. Yeah, and now it feels, even though the Georgia all six drives have gone seven plays or more. Doesn't it feel like this is a pressure drive oh, right now for Georgia? Absolutely. Yeah. The Georgia defense has held, excuse me, the Florida defense has held Georgia to field goals. Four times in the red zone, three field goals, and a touchdown. That's what kept them in the game. We told you they had a great defense in the red zone, and they have proven it again today. 
This time they let the kick go. And it'll come out to the 25-yard line as we check in with Jamie. Brad, we saw Cade Mays, the right guard for Georgia, go into the tent at the end of that last drive. He had his right hand fully taped back up, and it would appear as though he's available to Georgia once again. But on the defensive side, Tyson Campbell did go into the tent. Remember, he missed the last four games with a turf toe injury. So keep that in mind when the defense hits the field again. All right, Jamie, thanks. And this has riled the Gator fans up. That touchdown. They're trying to make it tough on Jake Fromm and company as the Georgia offense works at the 25 yard line. And with that last drive by Kyle Trask, he's a quiet 15 for 22 for over 200 yards. Fromm high snap, the toss, DeAndre Swift. Got about five out of that. So DeAndre getting up around 70 yards on the ground. At his first 100 yard game in this matchup a year ago. Second and five. Swift again. Gonna be close but short. Third down and about a half yard. And now if you're Kirby Smart, you built this team with these big, huge offensive linemen to win the line of scrimmage in the SEC. Let's see if they can push one across here. They do, but it's a spin move by Swift that got it. Yeah. And Jonathan Grenard is going, oh, I thought I had him. He sure did. He came right around the corner. And if Swift hadn't a stun off of it, it would have been short. Grenard comes right off the edge here. Watch him come from the right side. Gets a hold of a but actually pulls him over for the first time. Georgia changes up backs. James Cook and Zamir White come in. First and 10 at the 36. Cook crosses the field in motion. From here comes Grenard. Fromm got away from him somehow, and now he's still on his feet. It's a big play. That was a big play coming out and getting out of this pocket. This could have been a sack on the play. Get a rush right in your face. Avoid one, avoid two, avoid three. And get it into, what, second and medium. Big play by Jake Fromm. Pick up of three after all that running, but second down and seven. Florida Gators, no sacks in this football game. Some quarterback pressures, but no sacks. DeAndre Swift back in with Fromm in the Georgia backfield. Play clock winding down. Going to have to hustle. They just got it off. DeAndre Swift. And Swift takes the pile with him, a yard shy of the first down, but he's... Out to the 45. Well, you mentioned how Kirby's built this team with strength inside. There's Kinley. Watch him turn out on this play. Get some push. That opens up that play. Your left guard gets movement up front. I think it was on Schuler number 88, and that's what opened the play. Jonathan Grenard was shaken up a little bit on that play, and he's going to come out, and that's what stopped play right now. So that gave Georgia an opportunity to kind of huddle up over on the sideline with Grenard being shaken up. Meanwhile, it's a third and one at the 45. And time's becoming a little bit of an issue. 11 minutes remaining. Now you wonder if the play differential is going to pay off here in the fourth quarter. Can this Georgia offense push around and injured and in a lot of plays? It's 59 to 35 at this point in the game. Another 20 plus rushing game for Swift. Will this be number 21? It will. It is. It's a first down. Let's get an update in New York. Here's Adam Zucker. Zook. All right, Ness. Notre Dame is in a tight one with Virginia Tech. Their first lead of the whole second half with under a minute to go. Ian Book completing an 18 play, 87 yard drive with a touchdown on third and goal. They hold on 21 20. Back to you. Ooh. Brian Kelly would have felt a little heat if that wouldn't have held up, huh? I would say 
more heat. Yes. Kind of goes with that job up there. Here's the guys that came back today. Bernard with six tackles. Zaniga as well. Bernard on the sideline right now, though, shaking up. Jake Fromm off play action. Deep. He's going to go down the sideline. Wide open. Lawrence Cager. Touchdown. Fifty two yards for the Georgia score. Plenty of time with the play action pass coming across and behind Pickens clears it out with the deep run and you had plenty of time with the call. This is the first pass of longer than 15 yards in the SEC for Georgia and it changes the scoreboard. Did we mention getting Lawrence Cager back would help Georgia's offense? He's yeah. been huge again today. It was, but that was such a beautifully designed play. Pickens clears it out, and Cager runs right behind that vacated area. Georgia takes a timeout. Ten minutes remaining to see who's supreme in the East, at least for now. Georgia just took another step closer after 52 steps by Lawrence Cager. Now it's time for our Exxon Mobile game recap in front of almost 85,000 in Jacksonville today. Kyle Pitts, a big part of Kyle Trask and company. For a while, he wasn't getting a lot of help. The Georgia defense has been stopped. Nothing on the ground today for the Florida Gators, especially when the sacks are involved. Lawrence Cager, controversial catch here. Kept the drive alive on third down. And just a couple plays later, it was a three-yard touchdown pass to Dominique Blaylock, the first touchdown for Georgia today. But the Gators not giving up. They go 80 yards on nine plays. Kyle Trask scrambles out of trouble, goes to the end zone to Jefferson, who makes an acrobatic catch. That cut it to 16 to 10, but just moments ago, Jake Fromm to a wide open Lawrence Cager. This time, no controversy on that reception. 52-yard touchdown, and we've got an extra point coming up for Georgia now. Well, I think you're obviously going to go for two or two. In the nearly three years I've been with Scott Clark, I've been promoted. A bunch of receivers, Pickens, Robertson, and the tight end. Warner down to the right from the three-yard line for two. From is he going to go to Cook? He wanted to. He comes back across the middle and got it to who else? Lawrence Cager. <laughs> Well, he does pluck the ball really nicely, doesn't he? Catches with hands, a nice job by Fromm. Puts three players to the right, but he comes back to the guy that he feels most comfortable with, is Brad Tillagen. Lawrence Cager, healthy, the transfer from Miami, get to the goal line and post up, and he puts it right there. Lawrence Cager with a big smile as well he should. Career highs, 7, 132, and 1, and a two-point conversion to make it a two-touchdown game. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Smile Direct Club, Taco Bell, Exxon Mobile. And by State Farm. Back in Jacksonville, Georgia fans happy right now at the 10 minute mark. Their team with a 14 point lead. Still 10 to go. Yep, and all three timeouts. No reason to hurry. Just run your playbook. Don't forget, later in the game, the play of the game presented by Jersey Mike Subs. And Georgia kickoff coverage team down there in the end zone trying to rile up the fans. <laughs> They're doing a pretty good job of it. Probably not real hard, is it? No. Kyle Pitts doesn't have any catches in the second half. Yes, but the emergence of Swain has uh, kind of balanced that out a yeah. bit. There is Pitts right there on the end of the line. Actually in a tight end sort of spot, H-back sort of spot. First down of the 25. Trask throws out in and out of the hands of Pitts. Incomplete. Could have had it, I thought. 
just slightly behind him that time, right off his shoulder. Mark Webb in coverage, number 23. Good route. Comes out of it. Oh, yeah, you got to catch that one. He barely touched it. Behind P-Line and Trask in the Florida backfield on second and ten. Three wideouts all to Trask White. Getting some trouble. Late over the middle, incomplete intended for P-Line. Monty Rice was there. And Malik Herring got some heat on him. Got a little pressure from Malik Herring right there. Inside rush. That forced an inaccurate throw over the middle of it. Watch on the right side, top of the line, gets inside of the Lance and forces an awkward throw. Remember, Florida hasn't converted on third down. Third and ten. They're trying to adjust the receivers, Jefferson and Swain over yeah. there. And they Florida. have to burn it there first. He is not happy with the nearest assistant coach to him. <laughs> you didn't want to be that guy. That's right. At that particular moment. I'm going to let you take this, partner. Yeah, you'll see Van Jefferson, the right side of the screen, doesn't know the play. Freddie Swain's looking over, and then all of a sudden the coach says, well, you didn't do your job. Something to that effect. Yes. Again, you're the net. net. I don't know if that guy can lip read or not. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> They're still trying to get a third down conversion. That's yeah. uh, part yeah, of the problem. That's a big offer. Story of the game, obviously. Empty backfield for Trask. Five receivers out. Georgia trying to bring the heat over the middle. That is broken up. Incomplete oh, up the flag yeah, on LeCount. He grabbed him with his left arm as he reached with his right hand to knock it down. LeCount has inside technique. His job is to not get beat over the middle of the field. Coming out at him. Has to grab him. Nice interference on the defense, number two. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. He did just kept his basics and made the tackle. You get out of it. Right. It was going to be short of the first down, but he grabs with that left arm. Remember, his job is to not get beat inside. When he does, he panics with that left hand and turns Freddie Swain. And it turns into a first down by penalty at the 31. Trask throws across the middle. It is almost intercepted by J.R. Reed. Well, this one kind of took the breath away from me because in the old days, a safety would have lit this running back up. There's J.R. Reed, but the new rules, this is how you're protecting the players. J.R. Reed doesn't play the man. He plays the ball. And look at the safety as he goes for the pick because back in the day, that would have been a collision. He rides short on it a little bit because he saw Reed coming. Well, I don't blame him. Either. I don't either. Second and ten. That's how the rules pay off in the long term. More safety for the defenseless receiver. Quick throw. Out to Swain. Swain weaving his way to the first down marker. He's got it. He's been huge this second half. So here's the mistake here. You got to know if you're a defender where your help is. Okay, these two guys have to know there's help on the inside. Watch when the ball goes out there, you got to turn it back in. Mark Webb, number 23, is right there, but he can't get there because the defenders do not force the ball back to your free inside linebacker or safety. Illegal substitution on the defense. 12 in formation. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Check in with Adam Zucker in New York. All right, Ness, former Bulldog Jacob Eason making some mistakes after an intentional grounding gets picked off by number nine, Utah's Jalen Johnson for a touchdown. Eason's second interception. Huskies are still up two, though, after the two point conversion was a, a millimeter short.
Utah with a big defensive play there. Here it's first and five after the penalty. Or Georgia having too many men on the field. And to try to run it with P. Ryan. And this time he's got something working. Well, Michael, a flag flies down as he got to the Georgia 45. And I think it's going to be holding on the pulling guard this time. That would take away the best run of the day yes. by Florida. It's kind of a counter play. You hand off and the back reverses his field on the play. Holding on the offense, number 56. Offside on the defense, number 11. Those penalties offset. Replay, first down. I thought it was the guard. It was actually a tackle, number 56 to Lance. Watch him come around this side and hold. Did 11 line up offsides on this play? That might have been the call. I see him grab it. He grabbed Bonnie Rice very clearly on the play. Michael Prerine's going, wait a minute. I yeah. finally did something positive, and I got to start over again. But at this point in the game, under nine minutes, 14-point game, you're calling plays. You're thinking, unless it's fourth and real long, I'm going for it. Four downs calling plays on every series. Back to first and five at the 47. Trash got a run all the way. Yeah, that, that's, that's only a yard. Well, that's not going to gain a lot of yardage. As Dan says, I like my quarterback to be willing, but that's about all it was right there. And Emory Jones came in for one run early in the game. Right. That's been it. Joey Gatewood came in for one run for yes. Auburn, and now and he's, he's somewhere now else. Now he's in the transfer portal. 8-10, clock winding down. Minus two yards on the ground when you add in the sacks. Second down and four from Swain in motion. P line. Well, that was a little drop step that got him some room to work. And he's got a first down. Yeah. Devontae Wyatt, number 95, thought he had a tackle for a loss. And the Michael P. Ryan goes, hey, big fella, you can't handle me on this one. He gets his penetration, does everything right, and number two is just too quick for him. Again, four down calls. When you're calling plays right now, you're thinking, unless it's fourth and a long, long, I'm going for it. P. Ryan comes out, Pierce comes in. Changes your strategy on how you call plays. Toss it to Pierce. He gets about four before he's pushed out on the sideline. Actually, it gives you the luxury of running the ball more because you know you have four plays to get 10 yards instead of three. Clock stop momentarily, and now starts again. And as you can see, Georgia with a huge advantage. Yeah, I got a defender down out there. Time of possession. Dogs have had it a lot more than the Gators, but the Gators have it right now, trailing by 14. Alabama, LSU. If this doesn't get your blood flowing, nothing will. It's a great game to be a part of. They got guys that are fast. The games are always marquee games. It's been eight years since we beat them. You know, so this will burn all of my chest. I think you would want to join us for that one next week from Bryant Danny Stadium. Here in the East, still in the balance, but Florida needs to do something in a hurry. Trask throws too high and to head for Crow, the second tight end. Stokes was covering. Went with a bunch formation, flooded it. One guy goes deep, second guy goes to the side, and Big Crow, Lance Crow said, How can you overthrow me? I'm about to say six. <laughs> Here we go on third down again. Remember, they picked one up by penalty, otherwise, 0 for 6. Third and six. Need to get to the Georgia 34. A lot of space for Kyle Pitts right here. Nobody's covering him. Late shift, they found him. Trask throws complete. Swain again. Now, first half was Kyle Pitts. Second half has been Freddie Swain. That's his seventh catch. Works inside. Beautiful. When you've got a player playing inside, you know the coach has said, don't get beat inside. So what do you do? You press that coverage. You don't go straight. You run right at him like Swain did, and that opens it up for an easy pitch and catch. First third down conversion. It was a 15-yard run and catch to the 25 of Georgia. Man coverage. Here comes the blitz. They're coming.
Trask gets rid of it in a hurry to Piran at around the 20 yard line. And we're down to six and a half minutes. No choice. Georgia understands they got to get a stop, but Florida knows they need seven points. Second and five at the 20. Trash steps up in the pocket. Now the pocket collapses and he goes down at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a foot out of it. Good coverage this time by that Georgia secondary. Nowhere to go with the ball. Had a decent amount of time. Rode up into the pocket and then had to get what he could. Back to the line is what he got. Third and five. They picked up the last one. First time Florida has been in the red zone all football game. And they're barely there. Right on the 20 yard line. They're going to keep it on the ground, and it is P. Ryan for the first down. Good Again. run. Ness, because you can go for it on fourth down, you've got the liberty of running it on third down. Just gives more plays to your offense. Good blocking up front that time. Gets the edge, and Pirine makes it another set of downs in the red zone for Stone, Florida. Stone forced that. The left tackle got a nice block to kind of open that gap up for Pirine to get it down to the 14-yard line. Trash. Slant to Jefferson. To about the four. It's getting gritty time here. Got a flag down. On the far hash. I think it was an illegal formation. An eligible receiver downfield, number 16 on the offense. He was covered up by the end man on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. Yeah, pretty. I looked at it on my monitor while the referee was making it. These two players are on the line of scrimmage. They both go out for a pass, and that's why it's called. Remember on the left side earlier, they had to take a timeout because yes, they were because also that, lined yes, up they that were way. both looking around. We're under five in regulation. First and 15 at the 19. Empty backfield, Kyle Trask. Set to throw again, throws the slant again. This one's broken up, incomplete, intended for Swain, and Mark Webb was right on his hip. Well, right now, the Georgia defensive backs are playing the slant. I think they need to duck inside right here and then go long. They need to do, a, like, one of those inside fades. The slot receiver takes a step in and then goes to the corner of the end zone. Because the Georgia line, the defensive backs are just standing there, catching the slant right now. Jefferson in the position to do it. Blitz look from Georgia. Second and 15. They come. They're going to run it. Piran looking for a place to sneak in there around the 15 or 14 yard line. So that's a sixth run on this drive after not being able to run most of the day. And if you're a Florida fan, you're saying, well, why couldn't we do this before the difference again? Since you have four downs, you have the liberty to call it. Trask looks to the sideline, comes back in to face a third and ten at the four-minute mark. The throw's complete again. Jefferson, he's knocked out of bounds, two yards shy of the first down. Yeah, interesting. Georgia that time drops eight, and Trask still knows where to go with the ball quickly on the play. Goes to the wide receiver, nobody on top of him, and it's an easy pitch and catch. Well, I think that even might have been a mistake by Eric Stokes. He should have been up on there and forcing a deeper throw. If you're a Florida fan, this might be your only chance if you don't pick up the fourth down. You might not get it back. Fourth and two. Four receivers to Trask right and Pitts to the left. I think Kirby called the timeout here. He did. Did quite the way things were lined up. He runs down the sideline and calls it. And we'll see fourth and two when we come back. <laughs> 
328 remaining in regulation in Jacksonville the 16th play of the Florida drive coming up and Gary it's fourth down and your hopes for the East right here and remember this Florida offense their receivers is balanced eight different players have caught passes for over 150 yards they could throw it to anyone you got to believe Pitts and Swain are the two most likely Pitts is to the bottom of the screen Swain is in the slot fourth and two quick throw wide out screen got it complete Trayvon Grimes, it's first and goal. They went with a wide receiver screen, a tunnel screen to the outside. Quick throw, everybody inside's blocking. Only one receiver had a chance to get the ball. The other receivers were blocking. Now they come up in hurry. Everybody bunched in tight at the two-yard line. Play fake to Piran, the throw. Touchdown, Freddie Swain. line to the right and then a play action pass to the right look at only two people to the left side of the center Swain's gonna just slide out quick fake slide him out and he's got him 75 yard drive in 17 plays 17 plays and they utilize fourth down smartly Kyle Trask he had three fourth quarter touchdown drives against Kentucky when he came in now he's got two in this game McPherson for the point after it's good. With three minutes and 11 seconds remaining in regulation, first Florida quarterback with two or more touchdown passes against Georgia in 10 years. And he got it to Freddie Swain to cap a 75 yard march. They were two for two on fourth down in that drive, and they get the touchdown. 3-11 remaining in the fourth quarter. Florida with a touchdown after a nearly seven-minute drive has cut the lead to seven. I'd be pooching this down about 20 yards over the front line. And it's a like line that. drive. DeAndre Swift is a guy back for Georgia. is going to take it on a bounce at the 20. He's not normally their kick returner. But he, of course, is their tailback. And trusted tailback. Yes. Coming up when we're done, Adam, Rick, and BJ will have scores and highlights on the college football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage. Here's the issue. The clock is such a big factor because Florida has not had a three of out, three and out the whole game. In fact, they have not had a six and out the whole game. Remember this timeout when Dan Mullen got so angry. Boy, right now that looks like a big timeout. They could use it, couldn't they? They do have two left. Georgia with one. Can this Florida defense get a three and out and get the ball back to their offense? They're in that bare look. Bad snap. Wait a minute. That one was blown dead before the snap. Delay of game on the offense. Number 11. Five yard penalty. First down. Holy cow. Mm. You're trying to put the game away and you get a delay a game before first down. You're not going to want to be throwing the ball all over the field. This is the opportunity for Florida to get the ball back now. Huge mistake. And you see the clock expired before the snap, and then it was a bad snap. I, I have to, I have to wonder why you don't have a play dialed up that the quarterback doesn't have to change at the line of scrimmage. Get out there and snap it. Jake Fromm all by himself now because Swift. Empties the backfield, the throws to Robertson, who somehow weaved his way. Looked like he was going to lose yardage, and he got positive yardage. Of course, Florida will take their first of two remaining timeouts. Solomon Kinley got out there and made an important block, the big left guard. Everybody's taking a big, deep breath, no matter who you're cheering for who you're booing whatever seven point game 257 left in the fourth second down and eight for Georgia DeAndre Swift nowhere to hide that time got only a yard wanted to put a, a point out a really smart play by Demetrius Robertson on first down the wide receiver screen stays in bounds gets inside and then stays inside takes the hit a lot of guys run out of bounds that would have stopped the clock 
Florida can't stop it anymore. They've just used their last time out. So the biggest third down of this season on hand for both the Georgia offense and the Gator defense. And remember, not a three and out in the game. The first down penalty, the delay of game, really changed the, the complexion here. Georgia needs to get to its own 42 yard line. Do you Third dare, down and seven. Do you dare allow Jake Fromm to throw the ball here? He's won you 29 ball games so far as a starter. Yeah, here's the problem. If you run it, you're not likely to make a first down. The guy that he has gone to when he really needed some something has been Lawrence Cager. Who's to the top of your screen? Here comes the blitz. Fromm throws. Completes it. Eli Wolf, the tight end. What a play. And Jake Fromm had to throw it flat footed. Brad Stewart undercut the throw, but Eli Wolf, right here, I think that's him. He comes out, Stewart tries to get, get underneath it. He does not watch Fromm throw it. He can't step into it, but the transfer from Tennessee may decide the Florida Georgia game. No way to step into that throw. Sometimes you just have to throw it flat footed, and he did. It's funny we talked to Kirby Smart about the fact that Georgia has not utilized their tight ends a lot this yep, year. Yep. He said we don't have a guy like Pitts. Right now he's pretty glad he had a guy that was wearing orange in this time last year. Absolutely. Now the ball's on the ground. And it's DeAndre Swift to cut the spin and he's to the 40 yard line. Nice job that time. Remember, the blitz was on. Montrell Miller watched DeAndre Swift take out Vian, uh, Miller on the play and allow the throw. DeAndre Swift with the big block on the blitz to allow the pass. And the clock winds. It's winding out on the Gators. Big Fromm will use all the time he can before he claps those hands. Wolf, the guy he got it to, comes in and sets up on the right side at that 22-yard gain on third and long. DeAndre Swift. Ooh, man. What a collision with Grenard again. Well, that Grenard, what a warrior he is. The transfer from Louisville. First game back, probably not in great shape. He takes on the tight end, Wolf, with his arms stretched out, and then he comes back in and makes the tackle. What a football player that kid is. Down under a minute. Third and six. Georgia 12 for 17 on third down in this game. Last year, third down was the key to beating Florida. It's been the key to having this lead right now. Eight for 14 last year, 12 for 17 this year. Might be just taking a knee here. 37. DeAndre Swift, the stiff arm, is going the wrong way, broke two tackles, and stays inbounds. Yeah, game's over. They could have just took a knee, but they killed a little bit more time. And it's a killer of a loss for Florida. Jubilation on the Bulldog sideline. It was a war. Hoping to get back to Atlanta for the SEC championship. They just took a giant leap in that direction. What a football game. What a well-played game. No turnovers in the game. Yep. Jake Fromm is with Jamie. Look at this unbelievable scene between Coach and Jake Fromm. Oh, yeah, that guy, no, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna Woo! get Jake. Don't knock her down, hold on. <laughs> that was quite the emotional moment it with was. Coach. What did you just say to him? He said, don't ever doubt, doubt Jake Fromm. And uh, I'm just so thankful. I got a head coach who believes in me and believes in this team. And I'm so thankful to be here. Did you feel like people were doubting you the last couple of weeks? You know, yeah, yes and no. Um, it, it's, it's a lot of talk out there, and you know, you, you can choose what you want to listen to, and I choose not to listen to it. Uh, I'm here, I'm invested with this team, and I love my guys. They came out and played great today. What about the trust and the faith this coach and this team has in you on passing the ball in a third down decision? Yeah, uh, that's a big time down. Uh, there's a lot riding on that third down for sure. We did great on third down all night. Uh, but this thing comes down to trust and faith, and uh, 
coach just hey, had faith in it and uh, had faith in Eli. He went up, made a great play, and uh, man, it's awesome. You know how cool this game is. How special was it to bring in two transfers in Lawrence Cager and Eli Wolf and show up what they yeah. could do here? Yeah, they did. They showed up and balled out. Uh, really thankful they're here on our team, and uh, they came. They played in an unbelievable atmosphere. Uh, really glad they're here on our team, and they played great. Jake, thanks. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Take from now 30 and 6 as a starter. 31st time he's won a football game. He didn't start the one where he took over and never looked back. As we take a look at the GMC game changer. On this November 2nd, the offensive line kept Jake Fromm clean all day. Not one sack. If you would have asked me, can Florida win the game without getting a sack, I would have said no, and it didn't happen. I had a chance, but it allowed him to make those throws and make the play action pass. Look how much room he has to calmly step into a wide open throw to Cager. Cager 52 yards to the end zone and then the all important two point conversion. And J.R. Reed gonna celebrate with the fans. So eighth rank Georgia upends number six Florida. And they go to 52 43 and two in the all time series. Now it's time for the Jersey Mike subs play of the game. How about on third down and seven it's third down and east. And it's Jake from off his back foot to his tight end for 22 yards. Here's how Scott Howard called it on the Georgia Bulldog Radio Network. Snap from Hill back to Fromm. Here comes pressure. Gators are coming. Fromm hangs it up. And it's caught. Eli Wolf at midfield. The tight end. They put him down at the Gator 43. And that should do it. Indeed it did. The standings updated. Georgia goes to the head of the class in the east at 4-1. And Florida falls a game off. So a giant step towards Atlanta for the Georgia Bulldogs again here in Jacksonville. That's going to wrap it up. 85,000 watched it with us. For Gary Danielson, Jimmy Erdahl, Brad Nessel saying so long from Jacksonville. Final score, Georgia 24, Florida 17. College football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage is coming up after these messages. So long from Jacksonville. CBS Sports College Football Post Game Show is presented by Rocket Mortgage. All right, welcome to the College Football Post Game Show presented by Rocket Mortgage. I'm Adam Zucker. Tonight on CBS begins with Bull and NCIS Los Angeles, followed by a new edition of 48 Hours. Tonight, only CBS. In the game you just saw, Georgia holds off Florida 24-17 to for the inside track to the SEC East crown. And for the 14th straight time, it's the team that wins the running battle that wins the ball game. Moments ago, Jamie Erdahl with the head dog, Kirby Smart. Coach, an emotional finish for you. What's going through your mind right now? Because you seem to be pretty fired up trying to greet all your teammates, all your players here. I'm just proud of these kids. You know, so many people died of these kids. So many people died of these kids. And all they did was work. Block out the noise and work. And they keep working. Don't doubt Jake Fromm now. He's a competitor. This team's got good leaders on it. The transfers come in, Cager and Eli Wolf, and they put some product on the field. What did it show you that they were able to prove themselves in this environment, not knowing what they were getting into? Well, these kids have played big league ball. They know what it's about. They're really good competitors. I'm just proud of the university and so many people embracing this team and coming out and playing the right way. Our defense, resilient again and again. Tough thing in this league, humility is a week away. Speaking of this league, you are now in the driver's seat for the SEC championship. Is this team where it needs to be to set themselves up December 7th? Absolutely not. We got a lot of road games, a lot of tough games coming up. We got three really good teams to play in our conference alone. So this was a good team we beat today, but our team's got a good team. We got some tough ones coming down the road. Thanks, Kirby. Thank you. Well, the man is a realist. They do have uh, Auburn and A&M to deal with here in uh, November. As I'm rejoined by Brian Jones, 
And the man who was yelling, take a knee, from the <laughs> two-minute mark forward, uh, Rick Neuheisel. And Jake Fromm threw 30 passes and won a game. Well, you just heard from his head coach, don't doubt Jake Fromm. 20 for 30, over 270 yards, two touchdowns. And ironically, the last pass there, you're going to see it right here. This last play was his 30th pass, <laughs> and it ends up clinching the win. And so forever is gone when he throws 30 passes, they're 0-5. They're now 1-5. I thought that was going to be a pick. <laughs> yeah, well, this dude is a, a different breed, the, the, the clutch variety, because that was super clutch, Heisman-like in that moment, knowing they're going to bring the pressure. They almost get to him. He stays in there, keeps his poise about him, has enough strength to get the ball to Eli Wolf as tight end for a huge first down and on the day wait 12 or 17 on third down Florida could not get off the field and we have to tip our hat to that Georgia Bulldogs defense as well they were a straight up menace right coming off the shutout against Kentucky now they have to face Missouri which they'll get at home I mentioned Auburn and A&M Florida has to go to Missouri so the Tigers mathematically still alive as well for the East crown but but I thought there'd be a little bit more of a weight off the shoulders of uh, Kirby Smart here well he knows there's still a lot of football still to be yeah. played right he's got Auburn still down the road he's got Texas A&M coming yeah. to town he knows that team still has to get better if they're going to get where they want to go. Cake is far from being baked. But you could eat it maybe just you a little. Eat a little bit. Yeah, maybe yeah. The, the eggs are cooking. Gotta up. put some icing on it. <laughs> All right. Well, we're getting hungry. Uh, <laughs> check the scoreboard here. This thing's still going. Uh, Mississippi huh? State up 30 right now on Arkansas. They had uh, lost their last four games coming in here, but Kylan Hill with a career high 234 yards and three touchdowns. And Texas A&M. Uh, putting up 45 on UTSA. Isaiah Spiller cracking the 200 mark there with three touchdowns for him. We're also going to tell you about Clemson's Travis Etienne and his big day on the ground when we return. He ate big.